Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Rodeo Time, the podcast. It's a very special day today in the Dale Warehouse. We've got Mr. William Clark Green here. Oh, that was Wait, wrong. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Donnie. <laughs> William. <laughs> William Clark Green in the house. What did you uh, play? Ham <laughs> horn. It's called the ham horn. <laughs> Sorry, ham, my, ham, 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 ham. my sound guy isn't on the same level as your sound guy. But, hey, um, there's a lot of buttons on these things. <laughs> don't look at a soundboard then. Because um, you just got an iPhone. Uh, we had a great time talking to Will today, so you guys are going to want to listen to every minute because at the end of the show, he's got an offer. He's got a job offer where he's they're looking for someone for the band. Yeah. And so, you don't have to be musically talented. Yes. So you would be a great fit. If you are... Oh, thank you. <laughs> we also talk about Dale's music abilities. Um, we talk about what you should do. We'll give some advice if you're a musician, you want to be a musician. So it's a long conversation, but it's a good one. Um, not any pauses, not very many moments where we had to... Hey, we, for, we did forget to plug... Uh, Cotton Fest. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I sock that a little bit. I threw a little pow-pow on 2022. There. When is it? Uh, it'll be... April 23rd is the Saturday. I think you're right. It's, yeah. it's, I, that, it's that weekend. It's about the third weekend in April. Come check it out. It's in Lubbock at Cook's Garage. It is an absolute blast. And we're headed as the 21st to 23rd, and me and Dale are having a meeting today. We're going to have a meeting today. And Stand we're going to see where it goes. Um, but there could be something really cool added to Cotton Fest. There's, we're going to have a meeting here in about 20 minutes. It's me, Will, and J.B. Mooney. And Leroy um, Givens. And Leroy and Donnie will be there also. <laughs> so we're going to have a quick meeting, meeting about what, go, what might go down that weekend at Cotton Fest, Cook's Garage, Lubbock, Texas. Come see you boys. And um, don't forget to check out our Netflix show. Yeah, it's great. Why do you do that so slow? How to be we a used to do that in the van too. This is really all way too familiar tricks that well, we used to do. We were doing okay, so we were doing it, we were just doing it with our mouths, like Donnie <laughs> that every time. And then uh, and then Sterling, Crawley, was like This is this is all I feel like Josh Josh, Josh is Josh is Sterling. the gate of all of this <sighs> stuff that comes through. Yeah, so we find out that a lot of Dale's Jokes and 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 success really stem from William Clark Green. The can't, my band and them being completely bored in the van, and uh, doing things like well hell yeah, well hell yeah, <laughs> well hell yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I also got the hat flick from Jacobs, but I'm pretty sure that's not us. Yeah, that's yeah. been Jacobs yeah. since I've known him. I didn't mean to steal it from him, but I do give him credit for it. Uh, much like I'm going to give you credit for our second season when you tell all of your friends and family to go watch How to Be a Cowboy on Netflix. Hit play and go to the restaurant if you want, but help us out there. Love you guys, and uh, let's hear the podcast. Brought to you by k and Rock and Roll Denim, Excalibur Containers, Total, Total Feeds, Feeds. American Ants, Bill, <laughs> Bill Grief Beef Company. <laughs> we'll talk about that too. <laughs> Rodeo time. Got to get her on down the road. Donnie, you didn't, I don't have your numbers, you didn't get my texts, uh, but I texted them about the Netflix deal, I thought it was just, like, fantastic. Man, I appreciate I thought that. You did a great job, everyone did a great job, it was really fun to watch. Thank you. I was expecting it to be awful, to be honest with you. <laughs> Were you really? I, I, I was expecting it to be cheesy, and it wasn't, I, like, the storyline was awesome, like, how it ended was great, like, I, I couldn't stop watching it. Yeah. I watched the, I, I watched the, in, a, in one day. I felt what? the same way. I didn't think it was going to be terrible, but I thought it was going to be really cheesy. Yeah, and it you, wasn't at all. It was like really funny. Yeah. You thought coming here was going to be cheesy. And you were like, oh man. How I'm many just a negative here? attitude guy. I guess. <laughs> Maybe so it's not negative. you. Maybe it's me. <laughs> hey, we're rolling. You can go ahead and put that oh, on. Okay. Yeah. No, maybe it's me. No, it's just doing first time things like that. Like, you know, it's just. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if there yeah. was. I, I didn't know there was a storyline until about halfway through, and then I was realized. I was like, "Well, I want to know how he does now." Right. Like I'm invested. Now I gotta watch the next episode. Like, and how it ended was fantastic. Like yeah. it was so cool. Like I wasn't expecting it to be a storyline. I thought it was gonna be more of what you do on social media, and like right, right. less, less, of, and, and and just kind of and it just felt, it felt, seemed really natural and fun to watch. Honestly, so I hope that is there. How does that how, how does that work out? Like, do you have did they reach out to you, or do you reach out um, to them, or how does that work? So there's a, 
Yeah, so a production company reached out to me, essentially, um, in, originally, two years ago, almost, um, called Red Arrow Industries. Red Arrow reached out, and they are like, hey, we want to make a TV show. And production companies had reached out to me before, but that one was, like, something about them was legit. And then they put together, like, a teaser sizzle of uh, me narrating stuff from my my YouTube video. And then they got us man there was all kinds of major networks that were like we were talking to i don't know if i'm allowed to say the names i probably am but like major networks where you would watch some serious shows but then when netflix called we were like yeah we we want to be on netflix and so we went we went forward with it and then a year ago we would be in like the third week of filming a year ago right now so um that's typically how it works, right? Yeah. I mean, it's always about a year. So we were kind of... <laughs> <laughs> we were kind of shopping around a little, but like people were calling us, you know, and uh, and then when and then Netflix called, and so I don't know exactly because you know the production company, and um, <clears throat> but yeah, I was kind of like like Donnie, like I, well, like you too, like. I expected a little bit of cheesiness, you know. Well, I was expecting but it wasn't near what I thought. It was exactly what you do, but there was actually a plot story. Like, yeah, yeah. And that's what I was curious: was that was that fabricated before, or did that just kind of happen? No, 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 no. See, I'm, and you can so watch it. The literally, show. is the everyday like that was like what was going on. That's what and, we yeah. do. That was pretty. De- I mean, like, and that's see, that's awesome, and that's right. why it felt so natural because it was. Because what I thought when I found out it was on Netflix, and it wasn't necessarily what y'all do. I thought some production team was going to come in and completely f- up what y'all been doing. Right, right, right. And that's more. I guess that's more on the lines of me thinking it was going to be cheesy because taking someone that has no idea about what the lifestyle y'all have and trying to fabricate the right. storyline and put the Hollywood influence on it, kind of, per yeah, se. 100%. And I thought that was going to ruin it, what y'all do. I guess that's what I was thinking about. But it wasn't. It was really cool. No, they, they did a great job there, just because also, like, I mean, Donnie's going to his first rodeo in the show. Yeah. And so I'm not going to say what happened, but these guys are like, so what's going to happen? And I was like, I have no idea. <laughs> but, but like we talk about in the show, we talk about this ladder system that I put him through where he goes, you remember, we, we, he goes through the, the spur board and then an easy horse and then a hard horse. And he gets bucked One off. thousand percent. <laughs> I mean, that was like, that's when the, the show got serious. It was like, oh, like, yeah, he could have broke his neck right there. Hardcore. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, when he's flying through the air, dude, that, he saved his most gnarly buck offs for Netflix. Yeah. But but yeah, I was like I was like this is a serious like this tier that I'm going up, the Carl Wayne stuff we could have never planned that you know, yeah. um, but we would have been over there, right? Getting that that was Get that was China. super funny. That was so that day. Um, and funny. I was curious. That was kind of my thing. I was like, did they purpose? Is this a wild ass cow? They purposely let out? No, this is okay. dude. That Joker gets out okay, that's, all the that's time. That's hilarious. Houdini. But, yeah. So I got him from Casey Donahue. That's why we named him Carl Wayne. He oh, used wow. to have a ranch in Throckmorton. Yeah. And he called me one day. He was like, we need a super puncher. And uh, we hunted. Me and but everybody boy, was busy that day. So yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, everybody else was busy. <laughs> we hunted all over that ranch. And I was like, I'm going to go check this one corner. And I was like, I really feel like we missed, you know. And so I went out, I find him, sure enough. And they were done. They were all about to unsaddle. And I came, like, leading Carl Wayne <laughs> up to the trailer. And he was like, oh, it's a super puncher. You know? <laughs> anyway, so um, he was an outlaw. Like, this dude was, like, in- uh, you could Yeah, you could definitely tell the wild ass cow. I'd have hidden at the cell barn. <laughs> so, so what we did, what happened that day, so he gets out. And then, but it's like the next pasture. But we can't, there's not a gate through there. So we got to drive out on the road. I pull in. And like five Suburbans came in too. And I was like, yeah, guys, yeah. no, 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 no. We don't need the whole crew. Like, oh, because the Maybe crew. a drone. Oh, you know, okay. And then one guy on the Can-Am. It was a big wheat field. And I was yeah, like, y'all just... y'all just go back to the house. Like, was that y'all's property or neighbor's property? No, it was the neighbor's. It was. And, and I was like, this is going to take us 30 minutes tops. Y'all just go back to the house. Give us one cameraman and a, a, a drone. And uh, <laughs> the last guy out, he was the snack guy. <laughs> and I was like, man... Coop, Coop, I'm sorry, but I mean, we'll we'll be fine. And he was like, "Yeah, but I also got sunscreen." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Coop, we 
don't need sunscreen either. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna, but he was dead. That's his job. So are know? these guys, where are these guys all, where's the filming crew from? Sure. And they just like LA, Oregon. So they're coming here and they're Tennessee. just like, what the fuck is going exactly. on? Exactly. Coop is from uh, Dallas, Fort Worth area. <laughs> oh, cool. It was all filmed during COVID. So Graham, Holiday Inn, 20 of them. They each had their own room. Wow. 20 rooms for two months. They couldn't leave. Because if they weren't filming with us, they were in their hotel room. Because if they would have left, then they would need probably, to be quarantined. And they're probably all uh, union, uh, union labor and all that stuff too, yeah. I'm sure, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so so sure. many hours a day. Yeah, 100%. I mean, dude, it was weird because they had to. you had to start. You couldn't eat lunch for like six hours after you start. Well, we wouldn't start till you know nine o'clock. So like lunch was at three, which was weird. Yeah. Every day lunch was at that three. That was the worst part. That the was food, probably the hardest part. The food was amazing. The food yeah. was amazing, but like, so they catered it and everything. They had all yeah local. I guess so. They came in and just were like, they pretty much were. Were they so separate from y'all's camp? Like they were like, hey, we're gonna come in and do our thing and be as less intrusive to what y'all actually do, or was well, it? Well, I was a producer. Okay, cool. And I was like. I was like a serious producer. Like I was, I mean, I was very involved. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. Which is part of why, like, the storyline and, yeah. and the because they didn't know anything about it. Right. You know, like I had to be. Yeah. If it would have been like we're gonna film this barbecue joint, you know, re reality deal, you know, well, like everybody can pretty much guess what's gonna happen in a kitchen, but when you're from L.A. and you come onto a ranch, you know, like they didn't know anything. They really didn't turn the cameras off much. No. Like was, oh, dude, we could have done like 14 episodes. Easily. Like some of the most exciting stuff didn't even make the show. Really? Did you have a hand in editing? No. I wish, I mean, I... Was there stuff that you filmed? I'm sorry I'm asking you so many questions. I mean, no, who's fine. interviewing here on this yeah, deal? it's fine. <laughs> were there things that got filmed and you were like, we're not putting that on there? Mm. I thought that. <laughs> <laughs> Leroy's pretty critical. I... To be no, like there was no a disaster moment that like you knew you'd get so much flack for. No, it, there know? wasn't anything where I was like, y'all can't put that on. Did you have that ability to do that? If they did capture something mm -hmm. that was completely messed up, let's just say like I don't think so. Maybe yeah. I mean like that like we were on the same team. Me, the production company, yeah, yeah, Netflix, yeah. we're all on the same team. So you. like if I would have been adamant, be like, can y'all please not? They would have not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what the contract said. I'm yeah. sure the contract was probably probably a little more in their favor but regardless like it was a very good relationship from start to finish cool. like all they were easy to work with that's awesome so it and from that regard like but there wasn't anything to be honest the main thing was i wish we could have put more in the show like i wish we could have done two or three more episodes yeah i wish we could have but um i think nine episodes Nine or ten, and they're thirty minutes long, right? Yeah, Twenty-two, yeah. twenty-four. Yeah, and you can. Yeah, I, I watched it all over. I watched it all quick. We watched the first one on the bus right after a show. We were in middle of nowhere, Kansas, and someone said something. I was like, "What? There's a net? They have a Netflix deal now?" So, the first thing I did is fired up, fired up the Xbox on the bus, and we went to it. And right after the show, we watched it, and then like we just kept watching. Like people would come on the bus, like come party, and we were just like watching. <laughs> <laughs> I was like. Shh. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, we're watching TV. <laughs> no, we, uh, so, yeah, so, to be honest, at the beginning, we were nervous, they were nervous, that, that we weren't going to have enough stuff to film, and so, like, we were going to make the intern deal a competition, where, like, six people showed up, and they had to compete, but really. In, like, ranch games or something like yeah, that, yeah, to, yeah, like, yeah. win the. But really, it worked out where it was, like, we just. It was the opposite. Well, they're, honestly, the interns, to me, is like, that's the, watching the show, that's what you invest in. 100%. Because you, you, you know, and not to be rude, but like we, you know you guys in the rodeo world, we know y'all's capabilities, what you're doing. But seeing someone from like start and seeing the training and then watching him go to his first step and then seeing her with her injury and, yep. and following that and her, you know, that's just really cool stuff. So there's a story between Leroy and I. There's a story between me and the in the interns. There's the intern story, you know, and then there's just the overall learning about a ranch. There's the little comedy quips in between, you know, transitions where the one-liners, which are my favorite part. And then there's there's just the the action. So it's really like you find yourself watching. I've talked to a lot of people where it's like 
They love Donnie's story, or they love Jordan's story. They thought the stuff between y'all was great. I thought the stuff between y'all was great. Was, so, was surprising. Yeah. And then of course. a guy last night, or earlier today, I saw him. He's just a he's just a slumlord in Graham, and I ran into him, and he was like, man, those little bitty jokes y'all throw in there are just the, that's what made the whole, you know, like everybody's got their <laughs> favorite thing, which was interesting. To the me. majority of it. Like, so the cow at the cell barn, that was a real thing too? 100% yeah. real. I saw, I, I coming, saw it coming, it but we couldn't. Enough. I saw it coming. Yeah. <laughs> so there was a guy. There was a guy supposed to be over there, and and he wasn't. He was new. It was his first week, maybe his second sale. I'm sure he's nervous. The and fucking he, cameras are on. And all that yeah. too. I mean, he, he didn't like, chain yeah. it, and so I'm on the opposite side. I literally couldn't have made it over there, but I saw it happening, and I was like, "This is gonna be perfect." I knew the bull was gentle, but his horn got hooked, and I was like, "Here it comes!" And sure enough, all you had to do is turn. Gate comes open, takes off. And I was like chomping at the bit. <laughs> of course, the sail barn folks, they're, I mean, they don't want that sucker on the highway. Hell no. You know, like 380s oh, no. right yeah. there. Like that, that, or 67. Was that, that Graham? Bad. So yeah, yeah. Graham sail barn. I bought, a, I bought a handful of cows from there. But I, I knew he was, and they didn't know how gentle he was. And I had kind of picked up on it, but he, uh, yeah, that was. And the bet was funny. Funny. How much? Right. Yeah, that was funny. It, it, that I actually guess wasn't the summer. dollar amount on the screen. That's their weight. But he was about a dollar a pound, oh, yeah, so they yeah. just rolled with yeah. it. Like there were a few little things in there like that that were there's there's a that people are gonna be like that's not right. Blah, like, blah, blah. So during yeah. that scene, during that scene, there's a few moments where you can hear Craig Cameron, who's in episode four, and you can hear Craig's voice going, "Yeah, baby." Yeah. <laughs> just, but Craig's got this iconic Western voice, and so they kind of use. But it, it, you know, it doesn't. It's obviously not sacrificing the integrity of the story. You know, it's just a fun yeah. way to... Or there'd be one part where you see me, they'll do a close-up B-roll shot of me putting my left foot in a stirrup, and you can tell it's a sorrel. And then they show me throwing my leg over my white horse. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Which, those are just funny, you know. Yeah. None, neither one of those, like I said, sacrificed. And then, but uh, Roper, the, the TV, like, critic, something in Roper, there's, it's like a... The Chicago, he's like the most famous critic, like TV critic. Chicago Something in Roper yeah. rave, you know, like whenever you they throw that up on the screen about a movie, like so he he made a review of the movie of the of the ep, the episode early, like a week before they came out, and his was like a flying colors. He loved it. That's he was awesome. Rotten Tomatoes before Rotten Tomatoes came. Well, out. and what's really great about it too is how clean it is, and the, yes, the cussing is tasteful and you bleep it out which is great but it's like it's Donnie, stop saying the f word but it's it's uh it is a family type deal it's like it's fun for a band full of a gen to watch it and then i'd be cool with right. my nieces and nephews watching yes, it sir. too. yeah and that's what we're i mean that's what we go for on our youtube channel so it was only natural that we wanted right to be, right you right know, and and uh so anyway we're, so you don't have a publicist what's that I don't know what that is. What you so mean? like when we release a record, an album, like we hire a lady that she's like, she costs X amount of dollars per month. And she, when we release a record, she works for us for like eight or nine months to help with the release of the record. So she gets us in all the magazines, publicists, is magazines, radio, uh, newspapers, TV, so late night, all that stuff. They have one. And, oh, okay. And, yeah. And that's what. That's uh, on their side of things. That's what they did with, that's how the Roper guy, gotcha. before the that's show why came I asked, out. Yeah. Um, so they, I don't know, I want to say they sent it, I mean, it's like thousands yeah. of, um, but. I mean, is really, Del Risby going to sun, Sundance? I don't know what that is. <laughs> but, um, oh, yeah, the Sundance. Is it Sundance Square? Is that what it's called? No, yeah, it's in Fort Worth. Yeah, Sundance is in Fort Worth. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, that, oh, you're talking about Fort Worth. Is that the No, no, no. Worth? Sundance is in parks, outside of Park City, Utah, and it's like oh. Robert Redford. It's is, like an award winning. Yeah, yeah it's thing. like. Oh, a, okay. Yeah, yeah no, it's, we'll probably go there too. Yeah. If they call it. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to tell you, man. But it's like a short movie. <laughs> I've been hustling in the DMs. That's really? where my. I've been my own publicist. Good. I don't, man, I've been. The, well, that's what I'm most excited about no. lately is Ed Bassmaster. You follow Ed Bassmaster? I don't know who that is. He's the guy like, psh, like he just watched the, the woman. Oh my car. gosh! Oh, that's neat. Look at that. That's neat. Would you look What'd at you look it? At that? Yeah, that that's that yeah, okay, gotcha. He's y'all like, quote him a lot. And y'all oh my talk. gosh, He's I'm hilarious. a huge fan. <laughs> so he made a video today, and then I put it on my Instagram. That, anyways, that was a pretty. But really, I'm doing this this uh, um, 
this competition, which will be going out when this episode airs, but it's uh, people that tag the show in their, if they post and tag the show, tag me and give a shout out, then I'll, I'm picking people to give free Daleware to. Oh, cool. And that has really blown up. A lot of people have been helping promote the show. Yeah, yeah you, didn't, mean, uh, you didn't give the instructions very well. A few people got really, really frustrated with me. I reposted their deal. I didn't they know thought they, they won. Doing <laughs> yeah, and they're like, oh man, what do I win? Uh, <laughs> you got to I, talk I, to dude, Dale. I don't know what you're talking about. No, I didn't know that you were doing it. I hadn't looked at your story when oh. I was reposting them. Well, koozie, <laughs> a, 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 a 50 cent koozie goes a long way to help make people happy. It's like anytime something happens at our merch table, someone gets frustrated, I'm like, dude, give them like a handful of koozies. And, there you go. And, yeah. you know, and they're always like, dude, thank you so much. You know, blah, blah, blah. So there's get some koozies. Y'all don't have koozies, do y'all? Yeah, we yeah, got we koozies. Do. Yeah. I don't anymore. <laughs> yeah. Me too. Yeah, no, that, um, it's been crazy, though. Right now, we're just, it's all about trying to get a season two. Yeah. Uh, which the show's doing good. I don't, I don't see why, how we wouldn't, unless they just decide it's not something they want to do. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why they wouldn't. I but guess there's, the so trash trash on, yeah, there's so much trash on, yeah, there's so much trash on Netflix, too. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll it's see. Pretty cool. Yeah, it's been fun. It's Very been cool. Fun. It's fun to watch for. It's fun to watch for people that have been following y'all, like me. You know, been following y'all since day one. You know, and uh, and how it started, and, and now it's on Netflix. It's just like, and it just shows the hard work too, which yes, is obvious. Right. So we did the first video, 2013. What was the first video? Dale Brisby Bull Rider One Greyhound Dog Balls. Yeah, I don't know if I've seen that. I was uh, <clears throat> I was in a Woodstown, New Jersey, and yeah, just Western. cutting up with some guys. You, so when it started, you were on the road rodeo. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it so, makes sense. You got the bit time on your hands. Journey, yeah, I was fighting bulls at that time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We were killing time. Well, it's, yeah. the rodeo circuit's just super similar to what we do. It's a lot of hurry up and wait, and you get like, we you know, we only have fun for ninety minutes, mm -hmm. and we have fun after the shows too, but. <laughs> <laughs> But like the whole day is stress. It's hurry up, wait, high stress. Yeah. You know, and it's just like we just kind of sit there and, and you have to entertain yourself somehow, especially when we're in the van. Yeah. You know, which is what you guys were doing in trucks and you know, and um, it's just like it's so miserable in the van. You have eleven guys in a van. Like you have to be funny or you'll it, you won't you won't do it. Yeah. You have to get yourself through it. Yeah, that's hard. Yeah. That's hard to do. Yeah. But. Um, yeah, you guys, you guys got it, and then you got to work a lot harder once you get there, especially you being lead. Uh, I mean, the good thing is hiring great employees. I mean, to, to really take the workload off. I mean, and having great management and great booking and, and putting the pieces together in the puzzle. But yeah, I mean, it's it's for for me. I think the one thing that's taxing after like a long weekend like this of five five shows in a row uh, is it's it's. it's Especially the way I sing, it's so hard in my voice, and also like you're uh, you having to be on at every moment, you know, and like you know people people spend their weekends, plan their weekends on coming to see you, and mm -hmm. when they, they they meet you, you have to be great, no matter if your girlfriend's pissed you off, or no matter if your dad's sick, or if your sister's kids in the hospital, yep. it doesn't matter what, yep. or you're just having a bad day, like you have to paint a smile and you have to be nice and respectful because. They've planned their entire week to come see right. you, and yeah. if they get the chance to meet you, you have you you want them to have a good experience with that, you know. So. Yeah. So do you do like a, and you're talking about on stage. Off stage, like you know, whether it's at the merch table or whether it's uh, backstage or whether it's uh, a friend of someone's, like a friend of someone that we that that their friends at the show and their family wants to meet us with us. Yeah. They come on the bus and like, yeah, and uh, and I think that's the only thing for me is like the. But I don't, I don't work. Normally, I work two days a week, so it's hard for me to even bitch about it. Like my job's yeah. great, you know. But like those are the things, like mentally taxing. It's not physically taxing; it's just mentally taxing. And that's why, like when I go home, like I'm just like that's why I love going to Eastland so much, just because I just you know, I'll get on the tractor and just zone out for four hours and shred, or I'll yeah. I'll go fix something that I have no idea what I'm doing, but I just it's like getting my brain to do something outside of that. Hundred you know? percent. So. That's why I'll randomly like go, like work day work for somebody yeah you know it's like it's it's physically like five six times more exhausting uh-huh but at the end of the day i have way more energy yeah because sure. and just, dude building fences also like it, it could like i had to do it unfortunately during the freeze which was 11 degrees outside 
and uh, I had some cows get out. And um, but that fixing fence also is like there. It's like it's for cows like me who 100%. aren't real cowboys and just kind of do it. Uh, my cows are just for fun, like, and and I enjoy the aspect. I love my grandfather's farm still having them there. Like, it's yep. just kind of this nostalgia thing. It's more romantic in my head than it is actual. Like, hundred percent. It doesn't do any create any income. It buys some new implements for the farm, and I get a cash right off. And well, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the property was it was handed down, so it's like you know, uh, nostalgia. It's, yeah, it's just kind of like this. Awesome thing. Like I'm proud. Yeah. I'm proud of our farm. You know, I don't want it to turn into a deer lease. Pretty yeah, much. Right. You know. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So. No. There's 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 a, a fencing and ranching and working with a horse. Yeah. Cleaning out the barn. Yeah. Like working with a colt. Like all those things are like, they're they're sure enough. Like, yes. The fencing part though. There's a time limit. You know, it's it's therapeutic <laughs> for like. And there's a there's two a season hours. limit. Like yeah. August. Yeah. Hell no. But yeah. springtime, early fall. Yeah, which which no one ever does for like that, two and a half hours. Then you can yeah. do something else. Yep. So yeah. Then yeah. yeah. you got Willie, Kevin, and Gabe out there digging. <laughs> how many holes? Yeah, did, have you? You probably haven't seen like, my Snapchat. So I've got I have like, like four thousand. I'm not. Holes I'm on Snapchat, it. but I don't even touch it. Or my stories, but there's like so I got a new fence. It's like just around the house and the barn. It came out to like three thousand feet of. I did a top rail pipe yeah i saw i saw yeah, the new wire yeah. on that fence yeah. yeah and then there's there's uh slick wire um but you, the backside i don't know if you saw the cedar post stays where they're putting them in i didn't go to around the house yeah I so, the garage so there's and turn around yeah so there's uh uh cedar stays every foot that you were putting into the episode is that what he's putting into the episode yeah okay. somebody not him but oh, willie okay. was willie okay. Kevin so Gabe. but the thing is is like there it's a it's a the pipe is at the top and, and they need to go under that pipe. So what a lot of guys would do is chainsaw them. You know, if there's 14 inches sticking above the pipe, sometimes 18 inches, chainsaw it. No chainsaw. I mean, like I have a chainsaw, but I don't want them to chainsaw it. They're digging post holes every one foot and burying that 14 to 18 inches and tamping them in the ground. But they're like an inch in diameter. Right, but still like so a post, a post hole. So is a post hole digger still, like a... Like it's, an inch long? Is it like a tiny post hole digger? You're no. making them build it. It's a normal asshole. size. <laughs> the, ground, the ground's hard enough. They've broken three. <laughs> yeah, they broke some post hole diggers. But the like, other, but at the end, it's gonna be a stout fence. Willie has gained a lot of muscle since it's gonna be a stout that. fence. It was, like hard ground, like you have to have a tamping bar. Hard ground. Uh, yeah, uh, just turn a shovel over. Yeah, that's yeah. how we just use uh, a. Yeah, we just use. Once a shovel you get it out, it's fine. It's getting it out. Getting the dirt out of the ground. So what I did the other day, um, did you get a glimpse of my round pin? I barely. Big post. Well, what we did, we had to do on those is we stripped the bark because when you wire those, the bark kind of, after a year, it'll rot. Well, then it's real loose. So I told these guys, I was like, all right, I want to strip the bark on all 3,000 of these stays. <laughs> when we they video, started, we were hoping that they were all together doing it. Yeah, so they start stripping the bark. like you know, different times because they go in a different... So Kevin, in two hours, he had four stays of the, the strip. And it, it turns out... Is he wide. out there with his fingers or pliers? Yes, or does he have like they're a... Trying this, they're trying everything. They're trying everything. And uh, <laughs> so, so I, they each stripped about like three or four posties each. And I told them I was joking. But... I That's thought they were going to quit. No, I thought they were going to quit. But, but they, they believe me because, heck, I'm already making them dig a hole. So they're like, oh, I guess so, you know. <laughs> but they didn't want to believe you. Surprisingly, <laughs> all three of them took it really well. They did they all three took it really well. They laughed and they were like, oh, yeah. that's a good one. No, they were going to, yeah, none of them quit. They actually were doing the, so. No, I was, turned the camera off and asked them, like, why weren't y'all mad about that? I'm getting paid either way. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and I, it's not like I need them done by this Friday. They'll go out there and work on it four hours and then come to the warehouse. Yeah. Something. So. But it is going to be a stout some buck. So are there any interns that strictly work on the ranch, or do they? Or everyone have work both warehouse and ranch? Um, right now because we're so busy, everybody's doing both. Yeah, and having to come over here and help. But those three spend a lot of time at the ranch. Yeah, except for Jordan. Yeah, J Jordan Maybe would serious. typically be over there a lot, um, riding horses. The girl in there that was editing, but she had knee surgery, so she's just editing. So between 
y'all two, who works the most on the ranch? Me. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we got a well and a me. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't know that I'm over there half the time, but yeah. I, I do more supervising his, at the ranch. Yeah. So, yeah. y'all are doing that fancy stuff, though, huh? What? Yeah. Well, my whole deal's changed, so I have a good. You know, Merrick, um, he's a bull rider for Texas Tech. Yeah, that uh, sounds familiar, because that's an unusual name. He's His dad's a vet in Eastland County. Uh, so, Is I met. that works for you? No, he doesn't work for me. Uh, I met him just because. I met him through his dad. I got my uh, I got my Cal's Preg check, and uh, uh, and he was working there. I guess he was still in college when I got my Cal's Preg check, and and he knew who I was, and he came up, and then I figured out we have a mutual friend. Figured out he golfs. No one in Easton really golfs, so me and him turned into golfing buddies, right? Yeah. So he finished out of Cal uh, like eight months ago, and I don't know if you've ever heard of Wilkes. Wilkes a ranch. Uh, they're billionaires in the Cisco area, and they've got amazing Angus cattle. They're just like top notch. They got a bull worth two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Dang! And their beef's great, right? And so we cooked steaks one night, and Merrick brought over his beef, and uh, and I was like, I was like, damn, this steak. I didn't know which one I was eating. I was like, man, this steak tastes better than the other ones because I had like three. Cause I was yeah. And uh, and Merrick started smiling. He goes, yeah, that's the one I just finished out. And I was like, you, this is yours? And he goes, yeah. And I was like, shit, that's awesome. Well, then he came to me like two weeks later and was like, do you really like that beef or you just joshed me? I was like, no, I, really, I think the, I think it was better. I thought it, literally right. thought it was better. Yeah. And he goes, well, I've got an idea if you want to listen. And so he was he, he wants to start. He got this lease property uh, close to my, my place and uh, Bill Grease Beef, the cattle company, which is kind of a joke, right? I made hats because I, I had five cows at the time. And I was like, just as a joke, I gave it to my friends and family, and then people just started wanting to, they wanted to buy them. So I just started selling them at a rich table, and now we sell a crap load of them. So he wants to start this beef company. They're opening up a new packing plant down the road in Brownwood. That's USDA approved, all that stuff. And so we're going to go pick out a cow tomorrow for my, my, my herd and then finish it out and then test it out, do the first test run. And then we're going to so actually So when you say do, pick out a cow, you're talking about like a younger yeah, yeah, we're gonna, yeah, a we're steer picking, or a heifer. Yeah, we're going to pick out probably a heifer because I have one, one steer. I don't yeah. know, I, I'm the steer six. will taste better. Okay, well, it's not a steer yet, and he's how big is he? He's he's he could he could procreate with his mom if he got lucky. <laughs> yeah, it's still might not be too late. It still may not be too late to castrate him. We're gonna look at his name. We call him Dan Crenshaw because he's got patch over his eye. <laughs> he's a black baldy, and uh and uh. And so, yeah, we're going to try that out and see. And I just told him that if we're going to do it, but he, just, he wants my marketing right with my fan base. Right, right, right. right. So, but which, the the, uh, the heifers will still taste good. Yeah. They'll still be really good. But Well, this is just a trial. We're actually going to we're gonna do one cow and then sell off this batch of cows and heifers, right? So, taste and, better is weird that you'll get more out of them, of the steers. Like, okay. they're, 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 they'll get, get bigger, bigger yeah. quicker. They'll, they're a little bit more efficient the than the heifer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, anyway. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. So, we're... We're gonna do one, and then we're gonna sell. We're gonna if we really like what we're doing, we're gonna sell everything off, and then buy a batch of ten that we think is the appropriate breed. I guess. Yeah. I'm big black cow believer. Right now we've got half red, half black. They're baldies both between them. You bet. So, um, and so we'll just see. He's talking about like there's this heifer cross that does really well. Like he's sorry, I'm not heifer product. Hereford cross. Yeah. That does really well. I don't know really know what it, he's talking about. Yeah. So like a Hereford cross with an Angus. Yeah. Well, that would be a baldy, right? Right. But, like he's talking about some sort of like it was some name of a cow I had that was not familiar. My my yeah. very uneducated, you know, I know the main breeds, right? But I right. don't know like if I saw a limousine, I wouldn't really know it was right. a limousine. If I saw a Beefmaster, I wouldn't really know if it was a Beefmaster or not. Yeah. You know, I'm not that educated at it, but I know the mains. The, is it Brahma or Bramer? Because in East Texas they say oh, Bramer, you know and West Texas they say Brahma. Well, that's because we don't really like them over here in West Texas anyway. Why? <laughs> well, it's it's not that we don't like them. Like I, they're they're like the mamas are crazy. Uh, yes. A Bramer person will tell you that this is not true, but I agree they're crazy. If you go to like Bramer associations, they're going to tell you they're not crazy, but I just think some of them are naturally more wild than others. It's not that's not necessarily why because we got a lot of wild cows out here too. It's just the climate. They do better on the coast. They do better in East Texas. Hot. 
the 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 insects the just their skin is different than an angus they they don't do as well in the cold cold right. as like what an angus would <clears throat> so they're just fit for different places they do really good like college station yeah, yeah. Area. Right. well see that or south was, texas when i was in high school i used to work in uh brazoria county it's over by need, need uh, yeah 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 sugarland yep and uh and it was all Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Now down there, like, and the moms were just like, for a Hereford down there is to cross it with a Bramer so that yeah. you can get, you know. We did that for a little bit. <laughs> That's why we're I have Herefords because when there. we were down well, you there, can't have Angus down there. It's too hot. You cannot have. Warm. You have to have Brangus. You have to have a cross. something, yeah. some sort of Brangus or Brayford or something, something, but something with the ear in it. So, but every, but in every bucking bull have Bramer in it. Mm, not, not necessarily. necessarily. They all have humps on their back. I just figured that was all. That well, I mean, all... even a big Angus bull will have a little bit well, of a yeah, lump. Yeah. yeah, not as big as a Bramer, true. but... The majority yeah, of bucking bulls are crossed. When but... That's one of the things, like, you know, a steer will not, because they were castrated. Right. But whenever that bull gets big, that, that big neck, uh, big okay. head, that's yeah. one of those things, the that, maturity thing. Yeah, yeah when they mature, the they start though, getting yeah. that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but, um, and that's why, like, a Bramer steer would be, it would be a smaller than, right. you know, like a mature bull, so... Uh, but anyway, yeah. I guess I've never seen a steer old because why would I? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, you only get to the house. We yeah, got, we got uh, one that's old prison and big. Prison mic. But he, is he an old rodeo cow or uh, bull? Or I think like he that? was a roped steer at one okay. point. Yeah, yeah, and then they used him as a practice bull. Yeah. Yeah. That's normally how like if if if, if any of them get big, it's yeah. because they were a roped steer. Yeah, they probably bucked him at a junior bull riding on the steer riding or something. Yeah. And turn back and. Yeah, you know, exactly. Keep him though. Hundred percent. And then they put poured the feed to him. He keeps turning back. He's a good one. He looks like a cow, but yeah. bucks really good. Yeah. So, but yeah, these two that JB are bringing. I think one of them's got a little hump to him. What's he bringing? It's two for Willie. Do you know of bulls? Uh, no. One of them's not uh, hooky at all, and the other one's just kind of scared. It's not shrub grubber, is it? No, it's not shrub grubber. Okay, cool. He's not. Is he coming? He lives in North Carolina, doesn't he? No. Where's he lives he? in Stephenville. Oh, he does? Yep. I thought he was... Lived in... He's from there. Oh, okay. About a year and a half ago, he moved down to South Texas. Two-ish. And then about... Yeah, about two years ago, he moved to South Texas. His wife is from Catula. And then about um, six months, somewhere between eight months ago. Yeah, right, for, right yeah, after the NFR. Year. Right after the yeah, NFR, he moved to Stephenville. Okay. Yeah. Why is Stephenville Rodeo Mecca? Why? What? What is it about Stephenville that is Man, so much different than every other place? It's right in the middle. Yeah, that's a very good it's, point. It's right in the middle. You got. I mean, is there's it the college. You think the college helped for sure, but I mean, there's there's rodeo college, tech, and there's there's rodeo colleges all over. Texas has, I would argue, the most rodeos. I don't think anybody would argue with me, but like there's there's somewhere to rodeo in Texas year round. And guess year what? Round. They need a rodeo. Someone and, to play guitar at them. There you go. Paul <laughs> William Clark Green. Um, but yeah, so so like, it only makes sense that somewhere right in the middle of it, there'd be somewhere where they all congregate. And then you know, long time ago, you had guys like like uh, Ty Murray lives around there, Tough Heedeman, Jim Sharp. Like a lot of those guys start making camp there. Yeah. And so then the infrastructure's just, there. And then again, the the, the Tarleton with the rodeo school, um, with the, with the college that has a rodeo team. And uh, yeah, people just start pouring in, and and then once you get the brand established, like it's not really, it's not what it is, it's what it looks like, and what it looks like is cowboy capital of the world. So then it became that. You gotcha. know what I mean? I wonder how many gold buckles are there. Bunch. There's a lot more rodeo. I see a lot more rodeo cows, especially bulls, breeding facilities. You can tell that's what they're doing when you yeah. drive by them. And they used to be, you know, Holstein cows. They used to be the dairy capital, and it, I don't. I, there's like one. Big Dairy, North yeah. Town. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right on, on off of eight. Yeah. yeah, and then right next to that, I don't know. The Australian guy has that crazy, beautiful place. I mean, that fence uh, was like it's like a million dollar fence, and it goes for like a mile. Yeah, and it's yeah. it's had this big, uh, it's like a kangaroo on it or something like that. Yeah, uh, uh, you're not talking about Clint Anderson's place, is it? I don't know. It's a horse trainer. It, Isn't he from? It's one of them. Is. Uh, Nick, Nick. It's all green roof. He's, uh, he's he's a little he's more like halfway in between yeah. here and there. But um, anyway, cool it might deal. be Clint Anderson. Yeah. I don't know. If you're he's at Larry Joe Taylor's house, place, if you're at Melody Mountain and you want to go to Langleville, 
Mm -hmm. You go this back way and you go past this dairy farm and then you go, it's actually right across uh, 8. It's on the west side of 8. Um, the yeah, I, it might be Clint. I don't know where Clint Anderson's place is, but I know he's had one around there. Man, it's, but it's it, absurd. He's from Australia. So okay, that, that makes sense. sense. Okay. The kangaroo. Yeah. Um, but uh, how was LJT? It was fun. Man, it was so good. So good to be back. Um, Did it look like it was full capacity? I think that, uh, well, we played on Wednesday, and I wasn't there on Friday or Saturday. So all the photos I saw on Friday or Saturday were awesome. But every time, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday shows are always lighter than Friday. Right, Saturday. right. They just yeah, are. And every so, festival. Right. Um, uh, typically, you know, on Wednesday shows, they'll bring the big artists in to yeah. help uh, you know, get <laughs> yeah. some more people out on Wednesday. Yeah, all right. <laughs> well, hell yeah. Well, hell yeah. We, uh, we had an absolute, a fun, absolute uh, awesome show. I mean, it's just so much energy on that stage. The the funny story that happened that night is I was in Rio Dosa uh, with my girlfriend two weeks ago. We went up there just to relax and I had a couple cocktails and I cut my hair with scissors, kitchen scissors. It does look shorter. Yeah. And so uh, I cut a huge chunk off the back. So, and I don't wear hats on stage, never have, just is not, never have, a, never wore hats on stage. And, um, but I had to do something. I either had to cut it either super short or cover it up. So I wore my cowboy hat on stage, which I've never done. <laughs> and uh, and at the end of the show, I grabbed it and I did the Garth Brooks thing, right? And I threw it in the crowd. And there's this guy. And this is like two hours in the show. It's like last, you know, one of the last songs. Like yeah. people are already kind of going to their campsite. And I look up and and there's this guy like standing in the field and he's not even looking at the stage. And this, <laughs> and this hat just. Just like hits him in the neck, him. just like uh, like uh, like Doctor No on uh, James Bond, yeah. you know, like where he throws his hat and like slices people's heads off, and he, he goes, he, he's telling, he's like, what the, f and he grabs it and he just throws it behind him, <laughs> <laughs> and everyone behind him is like, oh, give me the hat, give me the hat. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's funny. And I was hoping it would go up, you know, and kind of like float down, but it was like a frisbee. It was like, <laughs> yeah. oh, that's funny. Man, that's such a cool setup for, oh, for like musicians. Y'all got the way it's set up leading up. I mean, like, it's a cool maybe spot. you play at a lot of places like that, but I just, I feel like that's a cool setup. It's top tier. Well, the way Larry Joe Taylor <laughs> has done everything is literally, um, and he's been a mentor of me with Cotton Fest, him and his son, Zach. And I've just helped. They've helped me out so much with Cotton Fest, uh, yeah. and they've been willing to help, which is awesome. You know that they're 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 so supportive of me and and chasing that, which is competition, which is yeah. great. Uh, yeah. That they're that they're 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 wanting to help me do my stuff too. So um, I've pretty much formulated what they do and how they run things and how they treat artists and their stage is amazing and uh, uh, it's just yeah they're first class man. It's I mean, it's, well, it's first class. My funny story about LJT is. There was no one there except me and Donnie and Josh. Was it open? <laughs> we were recording. Aaron. Oh. Did Josh not tell you about this? Uh, he thinks so. We were recording for uh, Kojo's. Song. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know when it comes out. So that song's cool. The song. the, uh, yeah, it was a cool song. What's the title of the song? So, so me and his fiddle player, dear friends. And he showed me their mixes on their new record. Jody. I don't know if I'm supposed to be. Yeah, Jody Martula. And um, and he texted me last night. He, he loved the show. He told me that he he showed me the song. He was like, I was like, that song's so witty. I forgot what the song was about though. Yeah. It's well, about I don't want to spoil it. Okay. Yeah, cowboy scale. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I and he goes, and guess what? And I was like, what? He goes, we're getting Dell to sing this, sing this, uh, sing this verse. And I was like, that's brilliant. Of yeah. course, of course, he should. Yeah, because it's, so, it's a humorous song. It's great, and Coach doesn't have many songs like that. So it's it's no, cool. it, it's it's unique, it's a, yeah. but it's very catchy and it's well written. Yes, very well written. Yeah, no, and real was, cowboy too. You right. can tell. That and then the the get the other guests. There's like five of us total. Yeah, and they're all real cowboys as well. Especially the last guy. Like it gets, it gets. It's it's pretty cool. Are they musician based? Most of two of them are. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Ish. One's a. Poet. Yeah, yeah, one's a cowboy poet, two well, musicians, yeah. and Dale Brisby. Two musicians. Yeah. Hmm. So, anyway, um, I wonder if that second. I wonder who that musician is. Is somebody that I'm very familiar with? Um, Probably. they play at Music Fest. Okay, so it's not George Strait. No. No, oh, that was yeah. my that was me my guess. <laughs> but um, what was I gonna say? Oh, yeah. So I was just messing around after, and I was like, uh, 
let me record one of the things to throw in there and act like I was... And like so, the next verse after his Yeah, the part. next verse. And so Josh hit record, and it was terrible. It was so <laughs> terrible. <laughs> I like to think that I was, like, before that day, I would like to think that I was like halfway decent. Mm-hmm. By no means should I be an artist. Like, that's <laughs> never crossed my mind. I should go play for people who paid, you know. But if someone walked in the bathroom while I was singing in the shower, I wouldn't have been embarrassed right. before that day. Yeah. But I get, I think, you know, like listening through this stuff, man, there's that delay that is hard. And so I'm like listening to myself and just like trying to sing, didn't come out so well. I was uh, working on an album while he was doing that and he texted me and he goes, Were you doing it at Josh's studio as well? I did it at 511 in Austin. They were booked. Oh, cool. And I was just trying to get it done. Uh, Anyway, that's a different story. But uh, I was going to have him sing on one of the songs that I was messing with. And he sent me a deal. He's like, hey, yeah, we're not doing that. <laughs> I'm out. I'm out, I'm out bro. <laughs> Get somebody else. Uh, you, had your, you had your spotlight. I'm so you glad. Burned. I'm so glad that because it, like, it was a firm no, and no is the second best answer you can get yeah. in sales. That's what I've always said. And so, like, saved me a trip to Austin to film with this guy <laughs> and, and saved him the embarrassment, you know. Donnie, are you musically inclined at all? No, not no. really. He can play a little bit. He, he sings all right. But, man, <clears throat> he sings good. Just for all those people out there that want to follow your dreams, like, follow it unless it involves uh, singing into a microphone. <laughs> and it better be more than just your mom, aunt, and uncle, and cousins that told you you were good. <laughs> what are you trying to say? That's all. That... No, I'm trying <clears throat> to say that, like, make sure that, like, someone who isn't going to blow smoke up your skirt tells you, hey, you're good and you should pursue this. I think you just had an off day, cause like maybe I do too, cause you don't you don't sound bad like singing in the truck while yeah. driving. Maybe cause like singing is like golf too. It's like maybe. ninety. There's a lot of mental. Like you have to be able to. Feel Lisa it. thinks that Lisa thinks that I just had a bad day because I'm always when I work out in here I'm always singing because I have my beats on and so like she'll come in at like six thirty and hear me and walk in. It's kind of embarrassing. Maybe you just need to well, sing along with somebody yeah. else. Yeah, or take what, the headphones off. Yeah. Maybe yeah. it would be a little better. Because I was listening and I was right like, here. I was like, oh. <laughs> See? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I, was like I, I, did you Snapchat it to he, me? He wanted, I got it on film. Yeah, I think he sent it to He me. wanted to apologize to Josh. It was that bad. I, like, I was like, I was so excited to see how he reacted. Because I wanted him to be like, man, that was so that's good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> man, maybe, that's really not a bad idea. Maybe you should have someone sing it and you sing with them. Yeah. So that's what that I have to, would have been really That's what good. I have to do with harmonies because I cannot find, when I sing harmonies on my record, I can't find the harmony. Yeah. I just, my brain don't work that way. I don't know why. But my, yeah. So my producer will go and sing the parts and I'll just match what she does. Okay. I can do that. Yeah, see, I don't even know what you're talking about, harmony and all that. Like, We were just, we went to Childress when I was a kid, and my mom put him in guitar lessons and put me in gymnastics. No, I went to gymnastics. I didn't go to guitar lessons. You went, dude, I... I went to one. I explicitly remember. Like, I remember like it was yesterday. It was piano lessons. I went to, like, I was yesterday. Your ass was taking guitar lessons. Mine was in gymnastics. Sometimes you're so adamant about stuff. Yeah, we did gymnastics so, in Wellington. No. We didn't go to we didn't go to children. Dude, this woman put boogers on her socks, and I remember it. <laughs> I was rolling around in gymnastics, and then waiting on you to get out of guitar lessons. Boogers it wasn't very long. Socks? It was not very long that you were you did not. Maybe it was Who's few older, enough time. I am. Oh. Maybe it was few enough times that you don't remember. Which which it you, wasn't like a big enough thing that you remember. And besides, it's you not even had like five concussions at that. And time. besides, it's not know. even like a thing that like you should even be arguing with. But the point is, it's like I'm only we went enough. Wrong. The point is, is like we went in enough times where I was just like, "That's his thing," and I gotta go find this other thing. You know, Gymnastics. it's like we can't have two guitar playing sons. It'd be cool family. if we did, though. Yeah, we have a band. Yeah. So, so Childress, y'all grew up in Childress? No, Memphis, thirty miles from Childress. I mean, there's Memphis, Texas. I didn't know that. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Two eighty-seven in between Childress and Clarendon. Oh, on the way to Amarillo. Yeah. 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 It literally it, has a sign that says, "If you blink, he'll miss it." Yeah. Yeah, you and Ross wrote some songs together, huh? Yeah, I wrote Ringling wrote Ross. So Ross College rodeoed. He wrote for a and Did you rodeo for a and yep. too? So he college rodeo for a and and he was... A bareback rider. Bareback rider. His yep. brother, was, brother and dad were Saddleboro. Saddleboro. So, which is, if you meet his brother and his dad, and Ross is kind of like the... 
His, Ross is not the black sheep, but if a fan, if their family if had, there was one, he's the, it would have been him. He's the artistic, does everything yeah. different. So outlier. Yeah. So he, of course, he does bareback. And uh, but I wrote Ringling Road with him. I've written a bunch of songs with him. Our new album's coming out. Uh, Baker Hotel. I wrote it with. Uh, wrote that with Ross. Wrote Goner with Ross. I've written a lot of songs with Ross. Me and Ross wrote yeah. it together. We're good buds. Is he still out in Nashville? He's in Nashville. I'm begging him. His wife wants to move to Lubbock. Yeah. Which is. She's from Memphis, Tennessee, and she loves Lubbock. I just, I lived in Lubbock. I love Lubbock. I, I know why people love Lubbock, and I know why people don't love Lubbock, you know, because it's far away from everything. The scenery's not that great, blah, blah. The people there are, like, the best in the world. I think she gravitates for that because she's been in Nashville so long, and the people there are just... So you're begging him to what? Move to Texas. Oh, to yeah, move. Yeah. I thought you were going to say begging him not to. No, begging him. I wanted him to move to Fort Worth because he's he, tra- he tours so much in Nashville. He plays in Texas a lot. And, uh, but he's, he's got some things he's working on that are really, really cool things out there. And he's got to see him through pretty much. And so, yeah, I, I think he has a plan to get here eventually, but he just, he wants to, he's got some things he has to see through. Nashville, so if so. he moves to Lubbock, is there going to be like a, a new addition to the panhandlers? I would, I would, I would love that. <laughs> I would love that. You know, but I grew up in the panhandle. You want to put you, <laughs> you want to you want to see a complete cluster. F- you put four ego songwriters, lead singers together, and yeah. start a band. It is literally like everyone has to just be like, "I'm out" on every decision because yeah. if you make one, then you're like, it's just like everyone you, like. Oh, we're just. I didn't realize how touchy we were. Like so it's, it's you, Cleto, me, Cleto, Josh, John, John, John Bauman. Yeah. yeah. And I think me and Josh are like y'all too. We we butt heads and we're not afraid. I'm not afraid to tell him. It is always fun to watch you two together. Uh, and you are in the same room. Yeah, it's just like and we yeah, we it's really like we cannot write a song together. Dang. Yeah, we can't even do that. We've tried. It's well, we're still working on. The I same feel like I've given him some gold. This choker doesn't do shit with them. No, uh, you haven't even asked. What? How many songs have I written since the album came out? So I gotta ask you. I gotta ask. That's something you. I gotta ask I gotta you. Ask you. How many songs have you written with all the ideas I've given you? Uh, I started like six of them, and okay. I've, I've been like, "Hey, do you want to write?" And you you ghost me. You know. Consider me consider me updated. Shun. <laughs> so fine. Unshun. Fine. Shun. <laughs> um, so I think I'm gonna take the first gen to Cook's Garage. To get it rebuilt. I've been saying that for months, and you're like, "No, nah, man." Bullshit. Nah. I've got a question. Bullshit. <laughs> Why? I got it. Willie got, tells you, and it's like, oh, okay. You have yeah, never said I should take the first gen to Cook's Garage. As soon as we got back from Cotton Fest, you were like, I think, I think I want to do some of the first gen. You should take it to Cook's. I think it's a huge mistake. Mistake? Why? Yeah. Not, not, nothing to do with Crooks. Because I thought Crooks. Was, Cooks. Oh. So you put an R in there. <laughs> Is that why I shouldn't take it? <laughs> no. I just... I'm hungover and I'm not, my okay. tongue is not working properly right now. So. Don't take the cook. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a my high school truck's a '91 flatbed four speed. The three. By the way, if anything goes wrong, that's the first thing I'm going to tell him. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm going to spray paint an R in there. And so I was going to buy. I was going to buy. A, a, I was going to buy a 12 valve. Put it in. I was going to put a bunch of money into. It. I was going to send it up to Cooks and just like get it, get the flatbed painted, get my grill guard repainted, get all the dents fixed in it. And then I realized, it's like, this is a farm truck. Like, it doesn't need to be, like, having a truck that I can literally drive through anything and don't care about, like, is a blessing. And I think if yeah. you do that to that truck, you'll lose, it'll lose its value to but, you. But, so, like, my furthest lease place, like, it's fine. Well, you want to be able to drive it far. Yeah. Well, what's wrong it's, with your dually? It works. That's what I'm saying. Like, the, the, my first gen is not reliable enough right now to drive it far. To do miles. all of it. Like, I can't take it anywhere. Oh, you're not talking about getting it, like, repainted and all that stuff. I'm going to do that, too. Oh, okay. But <clears throat> I'm saying, what I'm well, saying... Well, they're the is, best. What I'm saying is, like, like it'll fire up, it'll start, but it's just not been taken care of, because right. I don't know crap about trucks. Right. So, um, what I'm saying is, get it reliable, fix it up, make it nice, drive it to the warehouse and back, but, like, I got... So, there's that one ton, then I have another one ton... That is a Dodge 08 flatbed, and that's what we feed and run around yeah. in. It can pull a trailer. So, so you're going to take the feeder off this, this flatbed? I'll probably take the feeder off the first gen, just yeah. because 
I don't, don't even use it. the feeders. Yeah, either. I don't. Need Those things it. are expensive, man. They're, yeah. Well, that and if, you, if you're not walking around your cows, you're gonna have wild cows. Yeah, I got few enough cows. I like to walk around them with some bags. Yeah, keep them gentle. But That's the only reason I feed my cows is so I don't have to. I can get them in the pen. That's it. Yeah, I mean, do a home. I, I, like I said, I'm very ignorant with this, but like, the whole, that's really the only reason I do it. Why, if my mama cows are there to stay, why am I trying to put weight on the mama cows other than after, yeah. after they calve and they're milking, they're, they're going to slim down, right? But like, why am I feeding them all this protein to fatten them up when I'm not selling them for per weight? Right. Why does it matter? Well, because I'm a, what, what I like to call a sympathy feeder. Yeah, it makes Feeds me go a little broke. too much more than you should. Uh, yeah. I feed because I enjoy feeding, and I like having gentle cows. Yeah. And I like when they eat out of my hand, and I like, you know, scratching their forehead. That's me too. And I got I don't like them a couple of donkeys that come up that are super sweet. But I don't like them to eat out of my hand just because that makes them hard to sell. Really? Yeah, like if you give them a name. Oh, for you, yeah. No, yeah. Not like through the sale barn. There are people want a gentle cow. I'm yeah, saying yeah. it's hard for yeah. me to run her through yeah, the yeah, sale. Yeah, yeah, Like we had a, a buck and bull, 511. I don't even go to the sale barn. My buddy go. I just, I, my buddy picks them up, takes them. And, but yeah. I, had, I had a buck and bull, 511, and uh, I got just, I had to take them to a cowboy church. And I, at least they ended up selling them at the sale barn, but like I couldn't take them to the sale barn. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's uh, nothing wrong with that. But yeah. he had a name. He was my buddy. He'd been in videos. And hey, we got this buck and bull. Uh, if y'all want to buy him, he doesn't really buck anymore. But if y'all want him, no, I gave him to him. Do, do people on in, online do they offer to buy cows from you just to have a Dale Brisby cow? Like no, a, you're stuff? the only one. Uh, yeah, I still haven't. Actually, I still that was a hard no. No, so, it wasn't. I've had guys just, ask if they could buy our bulls, not buck and bulls, but, but breeding bulls. Yeah. So I wanted a, I wanted Larry Joe Tanner. I first, I knew I was going to only run seven cows, right? And so I wanted each cow to come from a cool place. So I wanted like, because I keep my cows until, like I buy cows at Brook Mouth and then I cab them out as many. Like I bought my last set of cows down near Brook Mouth and I got five calves out of them. Did you bring a trailer? No. Because I'll, I'll load you up. 77. Well, I got that skinny one in there. I got yeah, the worst fences thing. in Easton County, so I don't need. I need the most. I, I can't even have. Like I try to keep. I, I, I my neighbor's bull crossed the fence, and it was a very expensive bull. And he got my cows, knocked my cows up, and then I had. I kept three heifers from that set just to kind of keep them for a year, then build them up and just have them for a long time because they were really good looking. I couldn't keep them in my fence. Yeah. As soon as my neighbor's cows come up, they'll they'll just find a way out and they'll go join them. Yeah. I so I had to get rid of them. I had to sell them. And I wanted to keep them, you know, their whole life duration of rock. I wanted them to cab there, and then I wanted to finish out there. And I just I just couldn't keep them in the, my fences. Yeah. You, you don't want to give them 77? I wouldn't mind giving them she 77. Throw, she throws twins. What? Oh, that's 77. But I thought she you meant the one at the West Camp. Has she got horns? No. no. She's a little bitty. Uh, she's not bad hooky anymore. She's the one. She's the one we got on the show. So when I got frostbite on Netflix, I also bought a cow that day. That's why when I get up, I say, we've got to get out of here before I spend any more money. Because I'd also bought a cow. <laughs> anyway, she ended up, we, we it, it was a cow, was palpating. And then she had twins. So so I always buy, like, my, I know the cow price has gone up, but my deal is, like, I buy $500 cows. That's like, that's, that's what I, when I started buying cows, I buy $500 bread cows. That's what I do. Yeah. I brought my buddy from Weatherford, who's a dear friend of mine, but I wanted to show him the cell barn. We go in there, and he's so ADD, right? And we're sitting there. I was going to buy three cows that day. And my buddy, Michael, who is our bus driver, you met his kids when we yep, came up here. Yep. He, he works the cell barn there in Eastland. Uh, and, and, and I'm sitting there, and these, all these cows are coming through, and, and my buddy's like, oh, look at that one. What do you think that one looks like? Oh, it's bringing too much money. I'm not messing with that. No, look at that one. No, that one. No, we don't know. And this freaking huge cow comes out. And I was like, my eyes got wide. And then it started going up 800 900 1100 1200 $1,300. And my buddy's, I look over my buddy's signs. I was like, get your, get your fucking hand out. And he, he, bought the, he bought it. We had to buy that cow. $1,300 cow. I was wow. so mad. I, was, I knew I should, I should not let you in here. Because he just literally couldn't keep his hand down. I was like, you don't have prop. This is like, <laughs> you don't even have, you live in the suburbs. <laughs> No, but it's fun. It's exciting. Dude, that's how they get you at them auctions, man. God, it's so easy to raise you. You start I don't, bidding. I don't understand the, the terminology. And so the other thing is like what he you may have not seen in there is there's about five guys. Well, I don't know how big that cell barn is, but like at Graham, maybe six or seven at the most that are they're order buyers. And they're not typically buying for themselves at all. They're buying for feedlots. packers, they're buying for feedlots, they're buying for people. 
they got a list. They're called order buyers. And there's a system. And the auctioneer has a, like a relationship with those six people. And when something comes in, they'll bid. Sometimes they'll let him take them. Sometimes they'll let him take them. They'll want it. And when some a-hole from the suburbs come in, they'll see him bidding. And they'll run you up an extra $100, $200. Really? 100%. I had to pay for frostbite. So I don't even buy my cows. Michael is behind. I really don't know what he does, but he's able to buy while he's in the booth, you know, in the, the, the yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he, so if you're, so he just, he sees a good deal. He'll buy it and he'll tell me about it later. I don't even show yeah, yeah, up. Yeah. Yeah. So, so he probably has a relationship with somebody. If he works there, yeah. that's the easiest yeah. way. Yeah. You got the end. But like when you try to go sit in there and just bid, it's cheaper. It would literally be cheaper if you just, Sat down, told one of them guys to buy it, give them a hundred dollar bill. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Especially like me, because I went. Do in they there. have a look? Can you can you pick them oh, out? Oh yeah, you there's, there's some you go, stereotypes. What are, the, what are the stereotypes? Uh, well, it just depends. There's some older ones that got a belly. Are they always just like so? So here's the, nines, the first time is, I did it. The reason why I got ran up so much is because I looked just like them, and I was dressed as a sixty-seven year old rancher. We were doing a video. Oh, like I was doing wow. a video, went in there with the belly, grabbed a donut, had the suspenders and a belt. Ran him had up the like hat. Five, I, I wanted. Bucks. I bought like three or four bulls, and they ran me up. They thought I was making fun of them. Ran me up. Then there's younger <laughs> order buyers who are gonna, <laughs> yeah. there's younger order buyers that are going to have like their hat kind of propped on their head, and um, Sit, they slouch. The slouchers. They'll have a slouch, mm -hmm. short sleeve, button up collared shirt Little and then pad, the pad that's the, one of their cell barn tax tickets with their number maybe but sticking out of their pocket and they'll be tapping it on their leg and just give like one of these uh, starch jeans that you could tell were starched last week and they've been worn two or three times gotcha and the then dirty like starch, some yeah. sort of like leather like a normal Justin, with starch like jeans. chucka type yeah. shoe you know um, I mean functional efficient same yeah. thing I would be wearing probably if I was in that you know career but yeah those weren't those guys they weren't the ones running me up but them older yeah with the bellies and the that we should have got better video b-roll of those guys giving you the look just 100 like, percent. yeah that could have been a video in and of itself me trying to talk to him as the 67 how are you guys doing <laughs> <laughs> so is that at graham yeah so um, but the, the the michael used to work that subborn too he, the guy that owns it uh, that runs at uh, Ronnie Harden. He he's a friend of ours, and he you know he let us go in there to film for the show, yeah. and everybody knew we were coming for the Netflix show. But uh, I still got run up a little bit. But do you uh, run into it, issues of people interfere like interfering with the filming, like when y'all went to the sub barn or when you're in no, public? Uh, a little bit, like when we were gathering cows. There's one part where we were pretty close to the highway, and it's like every third car that went by was laying on the horn. Yeah. Right by. I mean, I would lay on the horn. <laughs> you would lay. You did exactly that. Was same difficult thing just because, yeah. especially since they were trying to make it look like we were <laughs> the same car, just yeah. started just going back and forth nonstop. <laughs> 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 Unfortunately, that all ended up just being B-roll and not like anything with sound on it. But no, that was that was a day, man. Golly, that day we were out there at that rent. Like we were filming, and I was like, it was the first time they were going to film us gathering something. And I was like, if you'll get on top of this hill, um, I'll feed them earlier in the morning over here. And then we we normally gather that pasture. We don't honk it. So, like, we did it the same way we did it. The only thing I was going to do was make sure those cows, when we started, were in a certain spot. So, early that morning, I drove by on the opposite side of the pasture, honked on the horn, threw some feed over the deal. And then we went out there and we took off and gathered it like we gather it every time. And uh, this film crew drug their feet. I drop everybody off on the back of this pasture just like we normally do with or without a camera. And it took them two hours, maybe three hours, to get in position. I ended up getting off my horse and we just sitting on the ground. We sat there just for three stayed. hours. Yeah. Oh, man. And I then thought I had, I had to it. poop. I thought so I had bad. Like, I was, Yeah. So, and, and, yeah, the Donnie thought it. And um, so. Finally, they're like, all right, we're ready. Of course the cows are gone. He was like, man, them cows disappeared on us. I was like, sir, do the math. All they needed to be do going was one mile per hour. At three hours, they're three miles away. Yeah. Pretty simple math. I was so mad because he had spent all that time getting B-roll 
and filming like the sunrise. I was like, do that shit tomorrow. Yeah. On a different day. We got to get hot. Something. It was man, that was a learning curve for them. I was I was like, I was having to, because then we had to do it again. Yeah. And uh, which is fine. It's it went better you know, that time. Yeah, it went better the second time. The the footage ended up better, but it was a little learning. I was like, guys, y'all gotta listen to me. And like, that's I'm heavy brushing that and that stuff. Are they? Yes. Are they just in KMs going around? I mean, that pretty heavy stuff. Well, no, that was the that was the thing. We had to the set them out where they could kind of have three cameras on top of this hill, and uh -huh. they just film us from a distance. Gotcha. Yeah, they weren't running around on side by sides, but but uh, yeah. talking about speed, how fast is your album coming out? Is that happening? Uh, I don't know. We just finished, we're literally sending off the master like this next couple of days. So it's finished. It's just, uh, we have we have this new management now um, that we're really, really excited about. It's been a transition. Uh, it's it's kind of crazy. My last manager, Dave Lytle, who is, I was with him for 10 years and we started from nothing together and came up. And uh, you don't really realize the 10 years, how much work they actually do on a day-to-day -day basis until they just stopped working with him. And so it's like gave me a whole new respect for what he, what he did and how hard he worked. And and uh, But if really, with stuff like that, it's I leave it up to management. My job is to write songs and record them the best way possible and tour. Uh, and they kind of do all that stuff. So if they think it's good to release in February, that's what we release in February. The record's going to be called Baker Hotel. It's about mineral wealth pretty much. And um, and it's I just it's just weird times. I, I think that I don't know if we're releasing music right now when it's still weird. I, I would like for it to be over. I really believe in this record. I think it's our best record we've ever done. And um, I want to give it the most chance it's got. So yeah, they've got big plans, and I want them to pursue those and have enough time to pursue those big plans. We're doing like nine music videos for this record. Um, we're filming in Mineral Wells. We'd love for y'all to come stop by, do some cameo stuff. Be great. Um, but we're filming all music videos in like a two week period. Oh man! So they're all going to be intertwined with the same storyline, the same characters, but the songs will be different. So it's going to be like a mini movie yeah. with all with every song as the different part. Yeah. So nice. it could be really cool. So, yeah. um, and so yeah, it's just like all that planning. Like I couldn't put a time frame on it. I have no idea. Are you excited about it? I'm, I, it's, I, to me, it's my best record. Um, it's a little different. It's weird because. We recorded this is the first record we've recorded in Texas since Misunderstood. Our last three records have been in Nashville. So we we just set up in Josh's studio, just four of us, and we just made it. Yeah. And it was so cool to do it that way. Simply you're in Nashville, I've got thousands of dollars going out the door every day. Yeah. And just the studio rental, all that stuff. And and Josh's place isn't free, don't get me wrong, but like there's no one there's no distractions there. There's a trailer house on top of the hill we rent right now, and we're all we're just four of us. We don't have another monitor guy we don't have any tech we have no cartage coming we've got none of that stuff no one's coming in and we're just there with our instruments and we're making the best record possible and if you want to spend an extra day making something perfect you spend an extra yeah. day yeah there's no stress yeah. no time frame i didn't really worry about this yeah i mean i during covid was easy because i was like we're just gonna take this weekend off right you know we're gonna take this weekend off and we're gonna get prepared for it and we're gonna go in and do it so we did like three trips in the studio and um yeah, I mean, I'm really, really excited about it. I, I hope, I, I love every one of my records. I wouldn't put them out if I didn't love them, you know. So I really loved my last record, um, and it's just at this point, you kind of put your best foot forward, and it's up to everyone else to like it. And they're either going to or they're not. And so, yeah. uh, and so it's just that's all I can do. I can't predict. I don't know. I don't know the formula. If there is one, I don't know it. Just put right. my best, try to put the best quality songs out there and do it in the best quality way. I think. I think everyone is performing at the top of their game from me on down our, our list of musicians. Like I think everyone is at the top of their game. I think this is our record. Sounds so a lot like around it. Sounds similar to like the thought process we have behind like videos that go out. You know, it's like you just never know how the market is gonna react. And yeah. Occasionally, there's one that you didn't think would do well that did great, and then vice versa. That's the worst part is like I, there's so many songs on this record that I'm in love with and it, that's what worries me is it's because I love them so much that, and like I loved A Bear Island I thought A Bear Island was going to be a smash I even told yeah. the guys in the studio when we recorded that song I go well we get to keep the bus because that song's going to be huge yeah. and it didn't do shit 
And the biggest song was really a song my that butt, song. My biggest song was a buddy of mine. Well, it's a duck hunter song. You're a duck hunter, right? Right. Yep. And uh, and uh, well, my best piece of advice on that record is don't ever name an album something that people can't pronounce. So it's H E B E R T, which right. is a bear. I, I knew that. Right, but people don't. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. People don't, and you probably know that because of a rodeo guy from Louisiana. Because there's, there's a bunch of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So. It's like I get Hebert Island, all this. It's just like, it's just, it was such a bad call. Did you? <laughs> what about Wrangling Road? You saw that one coming. You had to. No. We were, really? we were in the studio, and Josh, it was Josh first signed on with this. And Josh started laughing, and he looked at us and he goes, No one's going to like this song. And I go, I literally go, I don't care. It's the most musically creative thing we've ever done. It's going on the record. And everyone, my management thought, it, then my day, they, they thought no one was going to like it. Two out there. Really? No one thought it. Oh, dude, I love it. Yeah. Dang. She likes the Beatles. My band tried to convince, tried to, they set me down and told me they didn't think it should be on the record. What? It's got like, what, like 24 God. million streams They set me Spotify? down and said, they said, I just don't think this song fits. So I finished that song last second. on It was on the Rose Queen record. I finished it Whoa. the last day in the studio and we tracked it. And they were just like, now nah, I think it's, a, a, I don't think it fits this record. So you knew Rose Queen would be good. Yeah, so I mean, I was the yeah, record yeah, effort, yeah, but yeah. like, wow, that's no, didn't, wow. didn't she like the Beatles? Like the it's number the biggest, one on Spotify. Yeah. So those guys are, you know, those guys suck it. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. No, it just shows, goes to show we we really don't know, yeah. um, right, right? And we just don't know. And like I said, just put your best foot forward, and people are gonna. Our our goal is is when we put out a record is give everyone the ability to at least receive it and listen to it and know that it's out. And then, oh, if you do that part and it's a really good record, then it, it will yeah. take care of itself. Hundred percent. And that's uh, how I feel about videos. So, but I'm absolutely in love with this record. Like, this is my favorite record ever done. I, I think the writing is, is so good on my part. And I'm not tooting my own horn, but I just I'm very proud of it. And uh, I've wrote a lot of this record with Drew Kennedy, by the way, who's uh, one of my favorite songwriters. I love Drew. Um, wrote a song up in Ar in Archer City with him on this Drew. record. You don't know Drew Kennedy? I don't know Drew. Oh, he's great. Uh, he has a band, him and Josh Carter have their the Topo Chico Cowboys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, and they got this story, it's hilarious. They're coming from Lubbock from a show. And if you know Drew, Drew is a very artistic, left brain thinker. He's a scholar type guy. Yeah. And, um, and, and Josh is pretty much kind of the same way. And they're, you know, they've got their cowboy hats and they're driving around this Prius, right? And they yeah. get. They get out of that Stripes and Post, Texas. There's a Stripes right there. Yep. Oh, yeah. And they get out. And they get out to stop and get the Topo Chico's. And they, they ran swim trunks. And they're in, like, I don't know, a wife beater and a cowboy hat, you know. And they've got, like, you know, trendy glasses on or whatever. And they get out and they go inside and they both have Topo Chico's and they walk out the door and some cowboy pulls up and just goes, <laughs> and walks past them. <laughs> and that was the. And he goes, uh, and he goes. That guy knows we're not real cowboys. And he goes, yeah. And then Drew was, Josh was like, yeah, we're, we're the Topo Chico cowboys. And that's how that's that funny. Thing started. That's funny. <laughs> because that's, I, I get that same look from pretty much every cowboy I pass. <laughs> Is it the hair? Uh, I think it, they at that point they might even know I'm Dale Brisby, dude. But, the so hair in Eastland, just dude. People guy get smirks all the time. Yeah. And I, all and tell and then they realize they figure I guess word gets around and they'll, like the first time they meet me they'll just be like. Psh. Yeah. this freaking hippie look. Yeah. You know, and then and then the second time the hair like, doesn't hey what's help. going on yeah. yeah the hair doesn't it doesn't help, help in a small town <laughs> I wanted to call this shit so like early, when we did when I did the very first video uh, not the very first but one of my big videos You Ain't No Cowboy um, it was actually a tour of my 90 my first gen and it was just a tour tr a tour video of the truck and I was going to introduce and that was one of the early b-roll in the video was like the truck driving up and um I was just going to walk them around the first gen. But the first thing I said, I went to the headache rack and I grabbed some picking strings yep. and I said, if you ain't got picking strings on your truck, you ain't no cowboy. Well, I'm wearing a cap, no shirt, vest, holes in my pants, my jeans are tucked in my boots. And I was like, man, that sounded cool. And so I just kept going. I was like, you ain't got a flatbed, you ain't no cowboy. You ain't got whiskey in your truck, you ain't no cowboy. And, um, and then that video went viral by my standards. And uh, had a few people get upset about it and make their own videos, you know, telling me I wasn't okay. But they didn't get the joke, you know. And um, so anyway, 
it started a lot i've had a lot of you ain't no cowboy videos since then but now every time like i'm in the booth or like people come into the warehouse here like kids will come up to me and tell me that i ain't no cowboy and secretly it hurts my feelings because <laughs> <laughs> i would never actually tell someone that never what's so funny about that whole video is uh my whole career people have been trying to get me to wear a cowboy house stage and I've always said, like, I'm, I ain't no cowboy. I'm not. I'm not a cowboy. I was like, I was like, I always said, like, my cows didn't come with a hat or something like that. You know? Yeah. Like, uh, and uh, I just I just never wanted to do, like, I never, in this business, it's always, like, it gets so pretend, it, it bastardizes what the cowboy is. You know? Yeah. It really does. And I just, I know what the music that we're creating is not, just, it's, and I just didn't want to have this, like, deal, you know? And so I always say, like, I ain't no cowboy. Like, you know, yeah. I always say that. And so he probably stole that from me, too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I ain't got thought in my head. When you did that video, my favorite part of that video is when you're the mini horse. What was the mini horse name? Yeah. Uh, and you go, I'm sure. trying to drive my truck. Sheriff Galloway, I'm trying to drive my truck. I lost my s***. It's so funny. <laughs> yeah, oh, my. I'm trying to drive my truck. <laughs> it's this little mini horse. <laughs> And the dog on the tailgate, it's just like, yeah. the dog on the, and that dog is not right with us, is it? No, oh, the yellow one? Yeah, yeah he yeah, died. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, I think deep down I'd always been an entrepreneur. Yeah. And so. Um, if it wasn't this, it would have been something else. A hundred percent. That's what my wife says about, she's like, she goes, it wasn't, she goes, it was nothing to do with you having talent, singing, songwriting. She's like, when you decided you were going to do it, we all knew. There right. was no stopping you, and you were gonna bust your ass and work, and you're gonna learn and work so hard to get it done. And she's like, and that would have happened with anything. Blythe, you and could then I was back like, up like a minute or two ago. Say what? I was talking to Blythe, uh, my editor, and uh, and I was always like, well, well, shit, we should have told me that back then. I'd done something else. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been a doctor. <laughs> no, you wouldn't have been because like. The, that's what I tell people that want to get into ranching. They're like, they're just like so into it. And, and, you know, they get here and I'm like, man, it's not that I'm saying you shouldn't do it. It's like, because they have all these questions in the beginning about, about money, you know, as they should, you know, as you're going to get into any business. But I, it's like, you can do, you can work less and make more money in pretty much any industry. And so you find out that you're doing this because you're passionate about it. Unless you, you don't it. consider it work. Right. Yeah. And so, um, anyway, I just, I, I knew early on that I wanted to do something that had sales attached to it. Yeah. Because somebody had told me that anybody that ever got rich, 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 did it through sales. Do you have a... Uh, not that I'm trying to get rich, but I just thought, why not? I'll never go hungry. Yeah, yeah, of course. Do, do something that... For me, it's allowing. For me, what's so amazing about the music industry for me is uh, is I, the, my freedom that I have. Hundred percent. And that is literally the greatest thing. I, I run my own business, and my guys, my guys are treated well for what the bullshit they put me through. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling Noah about the flood. And, I mean, uh, a rodeo cowboy is the epitome of. I mean, rodeo cowboys and musicians are so similar. Uh, very similar. Very similar. Um, and uh, I feel like a lot of them get along. A lot of yeah, them are buddies. Yeah, hundred percent. Because we same lifestyles. And the sacrifices that you have to make. You made a very good point. You say you can either rodeo or you can go have a wife and kids. Yep. And I tell guys all the time that have wife and kids and they're thirty years old and they want to start a music career. And I go, well, that you, I'm not telling you you should, <laughs> because, but but you do realize that like there is a reason I'm not married. You know, I'm gone right. all the time. You know. There, it's going to be so supporting a family starting out. It took five years for me to make it. I didn't make money until I was 28. I started doing this when I was 22. Yeah. So it took five, six years for me to even get make a penny. I was living in Eastland uh, at my grandparents' because it was vacant. Yeah. And literally, I, I couldn't even. I remember the AC went out and I had to buy a window. I had to knock a hole in the wall and put a window unit because I couldn't afford to fix the AC. Yeah. And so I had, I had enough money to buy a $300 window unit in one room. Wow. And, um, and uh, yeah, I just relentless with it. But, but you know, a lot with me too is like you know putting on. It's like uh, the persona for a songwriter musician 
uh, is very on stage. There's it's a different person, right? So like me on stage is like confident, a little cocky. That that you have to kind of have this. You can't be this sheltered like um, this next song is. Um, I really like this song. I hope you really like it too. Yeah, you, know, you can't playing. act like that. Yeah, right. You gotta go. You gotta be like, hey, this. You know, you gotta, you gotta step out there and box and like. So I have a hard time when I get off the road, flipping back to who I really am. You yeah. know, and when you receive compliments all the time, all the time, it it, it it messes with you a little bit. It's kind of bizarre when you're saying, hey, you're great, you're great, you're great, great, great. Yeah. Great. And you really know you're not. Hundred percent. You know, it's just. But some some people, and it's really hard to check yourself and go. Hey, don't believe that. Even though it's a huge compliment, 100%. but it's so hard. To, it's so hard to like come back and go. Hey, settle down. You know, settle down. Yeah. <laughs> so, sorry, yeah. I, was, I was just checking. I got a text from JB. He's just run a little late, which is good because so are we. Um, I think that is a hundred percent on point because you you you've got to you've got to be thankful for the gratitude that 100%. comes in, but you can't let it affect you much like you can't let affect, affect the, let the negativity affect you. So it's like, you got to plug your ears from both sides. Yeah. Like, while, while being very grateful for the, you can't let it get to your head because it will affect the, then all of a sudden you think you can't do anything wrong. Right. You know, and you can. Yeah. And you do. Or and the opposite. You can't do anything right. Yeah, if you right. listen to all the negativity, that'll halt you in your tracks, and then you don't want to put anything out. So, I don't know. Like, I listen to Gary Vee a lot, and um, he, he says he cares most about what the people closest to him think of him. And I don't think we should, like, spend our lives worried about what people think of us, but in terms of am I going down the right road in life? Do, are my morals, like, really messed up? Is my walk doing good? Somebody who watched one video isn't going to know the answer to that. The, the four people who I spent 85% of my time with. So you're with, saying you need to listen to your brother? <laughs> <laughs> you walked right into that. You walked right into that. I'm, I am just saying. You yes. Walked into I am saying. No, but for real. Like if my brother was like, there's these three, four things that you might need to address in your life. Then I need to listen. Yeah, and I I am gonna listen way quicker than I'm gonna listen to someone on who's. And I think I I feel like he would probably do the same for me. Well, the problem with social media is is uh, and it is an, it's it's an incredible tool for people in my position to have access to unlimited access to the world yeah. to promote music on. It's incredible, so great, so great. Yeah, I know. I can. I, there's musicians that will reach out to me. It's like, oh, oh, hello. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> Well, you I don't come, know what you're not one of. Well, you come to cotton. I'm like, uh. No, that was a, that was a, that was. We a, horse traded that deal. That was a very fair trade for me, and not so much for you. Like, See, I think the complete opposite. I think that well, I think that I got the better in the deal on that deal. The, that then, that's the way a deal should be, where we both think that that doesn't. I I I don't believe you. I think I'm right. But there's, like there'll be random musicians reach out to me who just and I'm I'm very kind of them and honest and 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 I and I do most of the time just help them. But it's just like there's one or two in particular. It's just like I can I can man I can you think you're being slick but you're not. You know? <laughs> I get I get so many of these. One of my buddies he told me he was like and you get this too. It's probably he's got uh, his name's Jeremy and he said I imagine it's a lot like. When my four-year-old walks up to me, I see him playing. I see him look at the skid steer. I see him get the idea, and as he's walking over to me, I know what he's going to ask. And mid-sentence, no, you cannot drive the skid steer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and so, like, these people, like, only because I get these requests, much like you do throughout the day, you probably get way more of them. It's like, no, I cannot come to when they start off with like it's a benefit that's the first the first line like i can't come to your benefit in el paso you yeah. know well I, well what well, they don't realize I want to, to yeah but there's only so many hours in the day yeah. it's a nine hour drive we do i've never heard of that shit load of benefits all the time and i've and, already given to nine benefits yeah. and giving back is something i'm very it's and it's 
And that's the problem with inside my head. It's like, okay, I do, I do probably one benefit a month. I'll show up on a Sunday and go play. We'll raise a bunch of money, help someone out that needs help. Typically, it's someone I know. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's a story, and I'm just affected by it. I'm like, yeah, whatever you guys need. It's a terrible, awful situation. How can I help? Or if I just send merch, you know, whatever you need. Go sign auction this stuff out. I'll send you a guitar. And I'll take a hundred dollar hit. Like that stuff's all like I'm happy doing it. But what sucks is when you when you can't do it or you don't believe the benefit that they're putting together is the idea is great and their heart's in the right place, but you know it's going to be an absolute disaster and they're going to spend more money than they are going to raise for the or, benefit. Or or and and then it and then it turns into a or when it's a look at me, look at me, look at me, look at who I got for this deal. We're not going to help actually help anybody out. A thousand percent. But it's still heartbreaking to say no. I, I hate. I hate it. it. And, I and, can't and, stand it. And that's why, I like, I hope nobody just excerpts like what I just said because, like, it's followed up with like, if somebody reaches out to me, whether because people reach out to me and they're not even following me. Yeah. But I'm still like very much honored to even be on their radar. But I guess what I'm saying is like. Not so much the benefits, like I, because I help with a lot, and I'll give to a lot. Yeah. But I don't like to talk about it. Yeah. Like, it doesn't appear as though Dale does anything, like <laughs> you know, five hundred one c three or right. org. But like, yeah, numbers, letters. Yeah, like algebra. I, <laughs> but I do a lot, but I do not like to talk about yeah. it. And I, I would almost rather write a check, than than like. But but helping promote for people to come is, is different. Then there's some things that like I want them to ask me. If they don't ask me, I'm gonna promote it for free. Yeah. Like that I got certain there's people it's just like I wanna help them so bad. Like veteran stuff, that's pretty easy. Man, there's a good <laughs> veterans extremes out of Fort Worth are really, really great, great company. They do are great five oh one C. They do a lot of hunted hunts for veterans and stuff yeah. and and heavily and there's things you're just like you're like absolutely you can't like it's an automatic yes, you know. Right. When so you, it's like you said, it's an honor. Like yes, I'm happy to help. How can I help you raise money? You know. Yeah. Absolutely. But the other stuff is like, not not a benefit, but just like, there's just a random show four states away, you know, and it's just like, can you come to this and we'll give you a percentage of the deals if they use your code, you know. <laughs> really. Like, Man, people want me to do the code thing all the time. And you, you're so, and you're so like, you got to protect cheapening your brand. You have to, you know yeah. what I mean. And that's like, how, that's what we are with shows too. Like we have to be picky with our shows. And a lot of people think just because they can't afford us means we have to play it. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The guy called just me because today. you do, just because you have the money, and it is, and it is a lot, and does not mean I will say yes. We have to protect our brand, to protect our entity. We're the ones out there working, and it's, yeah. it's, you have to protect my guys too. So it's like, um, yeah. A, it's, a guy called me today, wanted me to do uh, some videos for an apartment complex in Florida, and I would make a percentage of the people that were referred there that used my code. I was like, pass. <laughs> like not, a, I not use car sales. Not a no. <laughs> Not a no, but a fuck no. Yeah. <laughs> That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Like, man, I appreciate the fact that I'm on your radar. I really do. But that's just not my gig. Like, I just, what are the... Call me in 10 years. There's going to be a kid in, in Stephenville or something who loves my videos, and now all of a sudden he has to see this ad from Dale Brisby. Hey, if you're looking for an apartment in Kissimmee, Florida... Florida Use code Dale Brisbane. <laughs> well, that's, you know, and that's, that just shows the brand, like you, the greed is not taking over the brand. And, and that's really good because you want to put out high quality stuff for what you do. And you want it to be authentic in the realm of actually real cowboys and real Western theme. And doing stuff like that, this, this, it makes zero sense other than you're selling, you're selling a turd to yep. people and you're hoping you get some bites. Come live at the and, cowboy apartment complex. Yeah. <laughs> And really, time like, share. <laughs> <laughs> yes. time share it gets free deal. <laughs> but at the end of the day, like you gotta, you gotta pay the bills, you know. But you gotta get permission to do that. So what I mean by that is like, I I haven't counted, but here lately I've been asking for a lot from my audience because it's the biggest thing in my life and that as in my career, which is the Netflix show. Yeah. So like I'm I'm. Like I've built this audience based on the value I've brought. Like I'm like I've put in time and effort and put out 
thousands of videos that were not ads, all for this moment to ask, will you go watch this Netflix show? Now, when they do watch it, it's more value, so I don't right. feel bad asking for it. But like occasionally you gotta ask for, if you're interested, check out my website with these t-shirts. Please, yeah. you know, check out my new album. Like, yeah. At the end of the day, well, they're fans, so they want to support. Right. They want the they they want to feel invested too. And you know, I, I feel like the lot, the great thing about even with Donnie, even with you, it's like, dude, you have people like invested in your rodeo career. Like, I'm one of them. Like, I want to <laughs> fucking know what happens. <laughs> <Just> like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like I, I want to see. Get yeah. No. And I want to see the the duality between you guys too. It's like it's fun. It's it's yeah. like. And I'm, I'm a fan. I want to wear the hat. Like right. I want to like I want to buy my buddies your hat. You know. Yeah. Like, I want to. I want to bring. You know, my bus driver's kids to be like, hey, I can get you to meet them. And right. Like, you know. Yeah. They think I'm. They think I suck compared yeah. to you. You know. And like. And. Uh, well, they got. They got good taste. And, <laughs> but like, yeah, it's just like even like the with branding his stuff, the pow pow, and right. You know, that's like cool. Like you have. And it, that what what really opened up on the Netflix deal is really like. Uh, getting to know more about what Leroy's part in the operation and with uh, the ranch too. Like I didn't really realize how like I didn't. I guess I, I guess I'm not the greatest fan, but like to me it was the it was really cool to watch Leroy. Like okay, like the decision he makes big decisions too, and you listen to his advice guy, and like he's out there working cows and all that stuff too, and like and like. But you can see the operation now, and yeah. like, and really clearly in that 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 Netflix deal. So, well, and yeah. I enjoy being a fan too. Like, I enjoy telling people about. It. I've already told twenty people about. It. Like, if you do, you even know this sound, go check it out. Go check I it out. I appreciate that because I want that too. That's how fans are. Think about you as a fan with something like the coolest part about being a fan is sharing what you are right. a fan of, and, yep. and the people people coming to you and going, "Holy shit! How have I never heard of this before?" Like that was awesome. You know. Yeah. So you take pride in it. You take ownership and stake in it too. That's that's the fun part is like, you know, Jeff out in, you know, BFE, Oklahoma, who discovers us, who's had a hard time. Now he goes down the rabbit trail of these videos and he watches the show and he's watching, you know, all 286 episodes of Rodeo Time. And now all of a sudden for the next four months when he's having a rough day, because it's easy to have those these days, um, he's got that 14 minute escape on the Internet where yeah. he can go watch something that. He appreciates meaning the lifestyle and then some funny characters who are living it and that he can relate to. Yeah. That's cool to me. Whether Jeff ever buys a dang shirt or not, I do not care. Yeah. Most Jeffs will not, by the way. Yeah. And I might make half a penny on the YouTube view, but I mean, I couldn't survive on what my YouTube makes alone yeah. at all. So anyway. Which is substantially more than mine, if you think about it. I mean, <clears throat> My music, my views are. I mean, I, 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 I don't even know what I, I don't. It's not that much. Like right. record sales for me, rec, music's free, right? right? So that's how insignificant our Spotify and YouTube stuff is. So it's practically free. We're probably giving away. We make our money on playing shows. We make that's eighty percent, eighty-five percent of our business is playing shows. Is about seventy percent. Twenty percent is merchandise, and then five percent is. Uh, streaming and all this other stuff. So. And I, I really feel like this is just an observation. I don't know numbers and maybe I'm wrong, but I really feel like that a lot of artists are missing the boat on merch and they call it merch, they treat it like merch and it could and should be an actual brand. Well, why don't you do our merch? <laughs> I mean, I could... I'm not saying put Del Brisby on my stuff. I'm just saying you have an entire operation here. I do. I do you have do, an operation. You, you, I don't know how you're getting shirts right now because no one in the country can, or at least that's what Nashville's saying. Your shirts are comfortable. They, they look great. Why not take a band on and, and, and do the printing and design and make money off that? Uh, I could, and the branding. I could lightly. Yeah. But I you, don't want, you, don't, you, don't have time, you don't have the time or the want to or give a shit to mess with it. Well, I would need to know that they had the branding side of it, you know, like, I, I'm on the edge of doing something like that. Like, I'm, I'm working on a couple of things that would allow me the bandwidth to handle that. If, if the band were able to, like, 
put in the work that I put in as the brand of Rodeo Time. The marketing on their social media would have yeah. to match yeah. his output. But, but essentially ah. what I'm saying is just like, I feel like when I talk to artists, like I don't feel like they put stuff out on social media. I survive I, on merch, quote unquote. I hate posting videos of myself talking to camera. Like it it's makes, not, I, I hate it. I can't do it. Well, I don't like it. Yeah, so I don't that, know. I just I feel like I think like most artists are like that. They don't like the, the other thing they're missing though is the is the the social media. Like yeah. I mean, every artist like should be making like freaking vlogs with their cell phone, and not just one every three months. Where you know some of them will carry a guy along, and they might make one a month or something. I'm talking like three per weekend. Like I mean, just simple stuff. If if man if. If I were a musician... Well, you're talking to the worst person on social media of all time. And you probably know that. I can see the look in your eye through those glasses that you're like, yeah, you are terrible. No, I, don't, I, don't, <laughs> I haven't evaluated your stuff recently. All I'm saying is that you guys, some of you guys are sitting on gold mines. And you don't know it. Because for them to be interested, we have to be interesting. You guys have some of the most interesting lives that nobody sees. Mm -hmm. That nobody sees, but and a lot of your people they don't want to have a camera in their face. But if I had a band, their ass <laughs> is not welcome on that stage if they're not okay with a yeah. camera being in their face. We were go we're gonna make so much more money. We're gonna be ROI positive because of that camera long before because of that crowd. Yeah, because like it would just you would just have to be okay with being filmed and obviously they would have a say well, if they did something or said something they didn't want on camera so like, we okay, are take it out. we are currently looking for a really video guy to come on the road with us and what i was telling my we had a guy come up this weekend from arizona he's flying it out it's it probably not gonna work out he was great he's probably not gonna work out because he has a smoking hot girl from arizona and he's not going to fly every weekend to yeah. texas and do it so um so but i told him but i told him i go i, I <laughs> I go, we post pictures, right, on social about just us playing on stage. I'm like, dude, we're not inventing the wheel. There's nothing unique here. I was like, you need to get yeah. guys coming in out of the bus. You interview the driver. Interview people in the band. Like, there's a bit, he interviewed Josh, and Josh a little tipsy, and he's like, uh, he's eating a sandwich, and he goes, what kind of sandwich is that? And Josh's like, it's a French fries sandwich. And he goes, it's a French fries sandwich. And Josh looks at the camera, he's like, he doesn't pay us. He's like, my, <laughs> my hands hurt. Best part my of the video. Hurt. Yeah. And I was like, it made us all laugh. I was like, that should be the intro to our video so, of the weekend. And, and so, like, so like a lot of these, we're trying to find someone that can capture us just being us. If we, we're hilarious on the road. If you can get someone dude, to capture it, then I would love that because I dude, can't find one person. Everybody wants the B-roll. Yeah. They want yeah. the slow yeah. shots yeah. in front, and the guitar, and the, it's in focus, and it's no. crispy, yeah. and that's good. That's great. Elements, but the majority should be life dude, on the road. The people on the Junk on the goods. the people that are watching that. At the show, get that. Let them have that. Hundred percent, dude. When I put out those those silky smooth videos with B roll, like eh, okay, but when I put an iPhone video of of Donnie eating a dang scorpion off of a, a rat trap, hundred twenty thousand views. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just like, <laughs> Donnie. I mean, you better, you better get used to eating scorpions. <laughs> when, <laughs> when we are interesting, they will be interested. Yeah. End of story, yeah. period. And so, like, Josh is hilarious. You guys are hilarious. And it's just like, if every time I walk on, I would be walking like this. And then yeah. if you got to blur something or beep something or, or not, not yeah. put it, like, okay, well, then just don't put well, it. Well, we just need someone that's willing to come do that for us. Yeah. So if you ever get a, a, a video person that might not work with your camp, send them my way. Yeah. So, or if anybody's listening or watching. like He could make some test videos a, for you. I would love that. You want to come on the road with us for me, Ken, and do it? Be yeah, awesome. I'm down. Amazing. Because Pay you to do it. Happy because, happy. like, it's just... Now, or if okay, so it's, it's two things. It's like they're watching it for the, the content value, production value. Content value is, like, d the 67-year-old rancher, my most viral video, shot with an iPhone. They're watching that because the content is hilarious. They're not watching it because it was shot with Quality a red, and a shit, but yeah. 180 frames per second, blah, blah, blah. blah. Yeah. Now, and it makes it more real. It makes it more. It makes it seem unplanned, unpredicted. Un yes. It makes it like seem like that was really good on the fly. Holy if crap! Like this podcast, he's just talking. This podcast. If these mics go out and we had to use that audio, that's fine. Yeah. It kind of you know like I wish it could be better audio, but it's not. They're still gonna listen. Yeah. 
Same thing with those cameras. If it has to be iPhone, that's fine. Now, when you can, the content value is number one priority. But if, if, if these guys learn and spend just a little extra time on some B-roll, this is a cool shot. It helps with the sponsor plugs. It's, it's in focus. It, the color's good. And you add a little production value on top of that, that's, that's good. Yeah. That's great. But number one, the foundation, the content value. And I, that you're, I'm actually this. Uh, this has been very eye-opening and for me in the last 15 minutes. This and dude, it it should not cost you an arm and a leg. No. Or you you should be you're paying for the quantity rather than the quality. And when I say quality, I'm talking about the production value quality. Yeah. So like, if you could, if like I would rather pay somebody who can be be there but not be stand out like ever like he's you know he's this is somebody that's like so he's to gonna my flow and cut my hair. no you're a musician you fit the crowd you got this maybe it, sometimes the iphone too it's like way more informal people will be themselves you yeah. get these big ass cameras, cameras like this stuff, right here yeah. people are like oh you know yeah, yeah but um anyway so i'd rather pay a guy you get like nine pieces of content out of it rather than one flashy b-roll thing that gets 1400 views on instagram yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, I understand. Technically, anyway, cinematically. I'm not. I'm not passionate about it. No. You can't tell uh, that I'm. That you can't I feel like I. Yeah, did, you don't make did I just, I'm gonna let you answer this question. Uh, so y'all, please be quiet. Did I just get a talking to? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard this Probably more time than anybody. Both these guys are. Not. Both these guys are laid back. Some of the some of my least expensive videos we made have the most views. So. Now I'm with you. You have a very good point. I think as soon as people start seeing a lot of, there's a time to have like a cool production video, but the, the like the weekend videos don't have to be this like crazy thing. Like no, it's it's, it's what people want to see. It's it, real. It's, it's, it's the bus. Yeah. It's yeah. the drive to there. It's drive. It's there. talking to the driver. It's and then someone it's, waking up out of their bunk. Yes. It's someone having chips. Why is there chips all on your bunk? Document. The video not, yeah. should end when you walk on. That's stage. what I was about yeah. to say. Y'all do your little group. Group talk right before, and then boom. Yeah. The when, are that's the when are you coming out? coming out with us? That's the outro. Just tell me when. Anytime. But see, that's how. That's what would build. That's what I'm saying. But that's it would, what be would build a it brand. Would, it would be great to have for a, the merch. It'd be. It'd be great to have that formula to follow. Because he's not be able to do that every weekend, which we would love. I mean, everyone loves you, but but like to have a formula to go. Hey, tell us when this is the content we want you to get, and then. The editing done, and then boom, post. So your foundation is this 12, 14, 18, maybe 20-minute YouTube video. That's the foundation. Then you get your little snippets, and, and that goes on YouTube. You make like a shorter version for Instagram. Maybe if, it, if you made an 18-minute, maybe it's like a four-minute Instagram and Facebook version. You have some swipe-ups. You'll have some little snippets in there that's just like that. Just throw that up on Instagram, and then you build off of your foundation, your longer-form content. Like you can do the same thing with podcasts. And it, what musician is doing? A Jack Ingram. Mm -hmm. You know he's doing a podcast. He can see it, man. He don't want to get on the road. Yeah. So he's going to leverage his name, and he's going to build a podcast to keep his brand going, yeah. and it's working. But there's room. Yeah. There's room for other people. It doesn't have to just. Well, I think Jack. that I think a lot of the band videos are so unoriginal, and when we copy those, I'm just like, ugh. It's just like we're just doing what everyone else is doing. I don't want to do that. Dude, I we have such a good, we have so many good personalities on the bus. Like, even to our driver, to me, to the every every person, our, our cranky sound guy, cranky cat, Mr. Cat. Dude, let's like, hear about cranky cat. Yeah. This. All, of a sudden, <laughs> all of a sudden, it's good banner. Now all of a sudden, it's seven minutes long. Oh, we'll just throw that up by itself. Oh, here's Josh. He's playing the guitar. Like, let's hear. Let's give us a quick guitar lesson. Now all of a sudden, you get a guitar lesson from Josh Serrata, and then you just throw it on there. We've been in the this bus for all starts, 15 folks. minutes, and we've got four videos already. Yeah. But all, all you got to have is willing people. You know, if they don't want to be oh, on Oh, my guys are, they're hilarious on the camera. Dude, Josh they're hilarious. Is, I would, but, but then, so that's where I go, and I'm like, I would have these shirts that we wear in these videos. Sometimes you ain't even got to talk about them. And then, like, video after video, bring value, bring value, bring value. 33 videos later, you're like, hey, also, all these shirts we've been wearing, they're available on. Why is the, the bull getting struck in the ass by lightning? That's just how it is in rodeo. Oh, wow. Zone. That's the moody zone. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. But that's um, lessons. Yeah. Deep hey, I, I feel like uh, you should invoice us. You know, I, that's, you're right. 
Well, I, I tell you what, it, what would be very helpful is if you do know someone that's willing to go out on with a band on the road, you know, full time and, and document. I mean, send them our way. Yeah. Like, that'd be awesome. Because we, we've had a we've had, we've had a difficult time finding someone, and strictly because I the reason we have a difficult time, and you're gonna think I'm gonna get another talking to after this, but I don't like on my business saying, "Hey guys, we are looking for a video person to come on the room." Yeah, I just don't like that look with us. I just don't. Um, well, what you can do is, if you would like to video for the William Clark Green Band, well, take an why, intern. Why don't you? Get an intern unpaid two I, weekends. Well, I don't mind paying. I just don't like using my platform to say, hey, we're looking to hire someone. Why? I That's like It'd be like a dream come true for like, there's probably like 90 people out there that yeah. would be. Just look into that camera and say it, and then uh, you won't be putting it out. That will. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah, it, you're. I, what I would do is like same thing I do with my intern deal. It's like, hey, send us a video you made. Do yeah. it on your story. Start with your story. Yeah. Like stories are very informal and yeah. it would not throw people off. Yeah, for sure. Dude, I, I mean, then, that's what I do. I was like, send them to my story and, and or I send them, I was like, send a video to Rodeo Time Instagram explaining to me why you'd be a good. So you could do the same thing like, hey, send us a video of yourself talking, but then also send us a quick video you edited. We want somebody to, and you could call it a vlog because in 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 film land, that means like less formal, like Story, you don't doesn't have to be yeah. as fancy. Yeah. But like, hey, we need somebody to make our, some vlogs for us. That's what I would do. Mm. So they don't think they got to be some big production, you know? Yeah. Because you don't need you don't want that. Yeah, you're right. You, you don't get want fifty people send you something. You pick your favorite five and then Zoom call them. Make sure they're not a weirdo. Yeah. Like this guy. Yeah, so like, get them to send you a video they made. Then, if you like the video they made, like, like, hey, now send a video of talking to the camera and tell me about yourself. Yeah, and just keep going, and then just keep going. That's what I do. So, that's what I would do if I were you. Well, thank you. That was very. uh, I wouldn't be afraid. You're gonna, dude. You're gonna give somebody their dream job. You know what I'm saying? I started with William Clark Green in 2021, and. Man, I just I never now I got a media company, blah blah blah. Yeah, thousand percent. That's that's awesome to me. But it would be a pretty sweet gig, right? Wouldn't it? Like, I think going like if I road, wasn't trying to like, rodeo and stuff, like I'm, especially if you can't play good, like somebody like me. Yeah. You know, it's like man, I can't play guitar, can't sing, but that's a cool lifestyle. Like that would be a spot where I could yeah. fit in. Yeah, you get the leftover groupies. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody's everybody's got girlfriends now. That's changed so much. The guys you get all the group. Oh man, <laughs> we used to be the most single band out there, and so the bus was always just. It was just like after every show, it's like we'd all go to the bar, and then the whole bar was welcome back to the bus, right? And so the bus was just packed, and now everyone's girlfriend up. Uh, uh, Josh Serrato is getting married. Dang, he proposed. Good. To wow, to Lindsay, and uh, we love her. She's very very awesome. And uh, so, yeah, once that happened, it's like, now it's like, after the show, like, we have like, there's not much to do on a bus, by the way, so don't judge me for this, because there's only like three things you can do. You can watch TV, you can play on fucking social media, or you can sleep, you yep. can play video games. And so we'll have like Halo night. That's four things, by the way. Yeah, but like sleeping doesn't count. Yeah. It's not really something you, it is something you do, you know what I mean? Like, I understand. So we play like Halo 3 from college days, like old school Halo, and we all like, we just talk to each other and yeah, it's pretty really, really fun. And so now it's like after shows, I'm just like, I can't wait to get back. We play Halo. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of like going to the bar, talking to chicks, and so it's like not. Nah. And you know, my girlfriend's like, you're so, you're such a loser. That's what you do. And I was like, well, I can go back to doing what I used to be doing before yeah, I met you. <laughs> you're like, nah, you know what? Halo's yeah, not so bad. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's what, and when I'm in Vegas, people think that I'm like, ready to party really oh my gosh they think i'm people like well, i don't know how many drinks i've not drank that i got bought do you say no i don't drink when they offer you no one? he takes them and hands them to me really yeah i'll, t- I'll hand them when he's maxed out then i'll then i'll tell him <laughs> then i'll tell him but like so if you ever want to drink for free just follow dale around and pick up the drinks people offer and that's yeah. actually a really good idea but except every now and then you get a roofie in there has yeah. that happened i don't remember <laughs> <laughs> no. i've been roofied one time I don't even know really? why they call them mm-hmm. roofies. They should call them floors. Right. It, was it wasn't even at a show. <laughs> I was in Houston, and I had uh, I was buying drinks. I had some I had, like, uh, girls I grew up with. And we were all at dinner together, and I was going to the bar to get drinks, and I was getting like three vodka sodas, a couple of gin and tonics. They're all chick drinks, right? 
and uh, and I I put them there, and I, I grabbed three of them, and I took them to the table, and it's all girls. It's all girls, and like two or three guys, right? And they're like smoking hot blondes. All my girls from I'm up with are very pretty girls. And then I so I had to leave the drinks, and I, when I came back to the bar, I grabbed the other three drinks, and then one of them was mine, and I I hugged. I at the end of the night I was hugging a potted plant on my sister's front porch, begging my mom to take me to the hospital. Begging. Dang. Wow. I don't know if it was refilling or not, but I was like, I've, I kept being like, that something's not right, something's not right, something's right. right. And like, I've tested those waters plenty to know. Right, right. Yeah, you right. know the difference. <laughs> yeah. There you go with that word again, roofling. There you go with that word again. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I'm a morning person. Dude, yeah. I'm up, I was up at 5.30 this morning. Like, I just, I am t- I'm up early in the bus. I'm, I'm the first one up on the bus. So if I can get, I can get to bed at 3 and wake up at 7, no problem. Yeah, I, I wake up. I wake up. I didn't even. I didn't. I didn't work out. Nothing. <laughs> it was funny as shit because right after I watched that Netflix deal and you talk about how like you're up early and you wake up whenever you want to. Whenever I texted y'all, hey, can like you know, I texted y'all at like two or something because I was yeah. I was finished. And I was like, hey, congrats. This thing's great. Like, like really did a great job. Seven thirty, his text rolls in. Nine forty five, his text rolls in. <laughs> Well, I, I saw the text I had a late night. Okay. at six, but knowing you were a musician and you, were, you know, when you had texted me, I, I was like, "Text you too." That's early. what I thought. <laughs> you might still be sleeping. I didn't want to wake up. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But uh, I had been anyway. awake for ten minutes. <laughs> well, thanks for coming on the um, Rodeo Time podcast. We usually wrap up with life advice. Mm. So, what do you got for our listeners? What's your um, life advice? Mm. Well, my favorite quote is uh, a Tom Waits quote. It's, uh, the world is not my home. I'm just passing through. And, uh, yeah, I mean, good life. I have good musician advice. Yeah, that's like, fine. Uh, You're a musician, so man, it works. Man, it's the, the – in this, in this business, it is, uh, it is get your ass on the pavement. Yeah. And that is literally, I see a lot of guys make that mistake. They think they can do it from their computer, which you can. It's possible for sure. But getting out there on the road, uh, it's like rodeo. You got to go, you got to go hit all the rodeos. You got to hit all of them. You got to hit your ass on the pavement. You got to. And don't be afraid to lose money. Get out there. And, uh, and also give yourself a, a date that allows you enough time to try as hard as you can, but also be willing to put it down. Walk away from it. I see a lot of guys spend there, spend too much time chasing after it, you yeah. know, and it ruins their life. And they don't know they're not even aware where they're. Where Dang, it is, you know? that's sad. That's a sad yeah. thing. So I mean, I don't want to be forty-five years old still trying to chase a song that everyone likes. I mean, and if that's your deal, do it. But like, it's not my. I want a better life than that. You know what I mean? Right. 100%. I don't want a quality of life. You know. So I see a lot of guys kind of get stuck in that drunken web of trying to create greatness. And, they sacrifice because you have to sacrifice family and stuff. We kind of have to sacrifice that to start out, and so it's tough to watch guys that thousand percent too late. They're, it's too late for them to go back to what they probably should have quit a long time. One thousand percent. That's rodeo. Mm-hmm. Like you know, you see guys that, especially, I imagine it's easy in in, in music. Like you see guys that uh, get a little too wrapped up in the after party. Yeah, hundred percent. And it'll slow them down. Like you can do that, and you can do that tonight, and it's not going to slow down your whole career. Well, if you have those nights over and over again, it's going to slow down your whole career. Right. And um, and so you'll see them, and and they may they maybe they ride halfway decent, you know, but they've got that, or or maybe they don't do that. And they just, you know, need to. But I don't know. I feel like there's certain fundamentals that if you execute, and then you're responsible with all the the fringe stuff on the outside, it 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 it'll work out in your favor. The thing about rodeo, which is also similar to music, is there's there's levels of like like you don't have to go to the NFR to have an enjoyable career. You don't have to play you can race rodeo. Right. Yeah. You don't have to play, you know, at Houston to have an enjoyable career. You don't have to do it for a living for it to be enjoyable. Hundred percent. Yeah. Music and music, rodeo. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that, that and really don't waste a second when you go after when you go after it, and you decide you put everything aside and you decide to go after it. Hundred percent. Do not. Do not slip up on laziness because there's guys like me, and there's guys like Kojo, and there's guys like Casey, and there's that you will never outwork. Yeah. And so 
you have to be the one of the hardest working one out there. And you can't let the party, the partying is fun and trust me, we all done it and we all, it's fun, but like at the end of the day, you're asked up six o'clock in the morning in a van going next town to go lose 300 bucks. I mean, that's yeah. the reality. So, uh, yeah, because guys like me don't slip on that stuff. We're that's, all, yeah. man, the year Jacobs Crawley won the world. Oh my gosh. Uh, there's no telling. I mean, he must have been like 3% body fat. Like this joker, he did everything. All the extracurricular, and I'd watched him throughout his career. He's been to ten NFRs and uh, in a row, and he's a world champion. And he's always worked hard. He's always sitting in his saddle. He's getting in the spur board, and even after ten years, you know, he's in the gym. He's doing all those things. But like, you see some guys, they're kind of a flash in the pan. That you know, and and they've got the talent. Probably do. They've got the talent, and they 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 win some rodeos. They draw really good. But what you see it is when they try to repeat. And, th- and then all of a sudden it doesn't happen the next year. And they, they think they got it. And I'm not talking, I, I don't know anything about radio, and I don't know Jacob, but I wouldn't be surprised if there was someone out there that's more talented than he is but does not have the work ethic he has. Oh, Hunter, I, I mean, I don't know either. Try you know, beats talent any day. He's, he's also, the thing about him is he also had uh, some talent. But, yeah, there's, there's so many guys, and I'm sure, he, you know, I can think of a couple that he and I have even talked about that just – if their head would show up, you know, or even just their work ethic, they would be world champions every year. Yeah. And and but anyway. Hey, but that's what that's why that's why it's so great because if you do work your ass off, like I know I don't have the greatest voice in the world. I know that like they're like I know what my pros and my cons are, but like I work really hard at songwriting, I work really hard at my craft, I work really hard at having a great band and I, I put those things on high value and like I see guys that I see guys that can sing way better than me, and that, honestly, I think they write better songs than me. But they don't have the work ethic, and they're yeah. literally in the same town they've been in. They're playing for two hundred dollars a night, and they're better than me. Yeah, and yeah, just I, because I, I, they I, don't want to travel and get out and, play and work. Yeah. And it's 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 it, the only difference is I just worked harder. That's literally it. I yeah. just worked harder. Well, that's I could say the same thing about social media. There's, you know, I mean, there's well, not, it's obvious. There's not because, very many yeah. people that are funnier than I am, <laughs> but they're out there. They're just not willing to put in the work. Well, and you're 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 100. I mean, you really opened my eyes on that stuff, and I I need to. It's only going to benefit me. So why not work? Hard it is it? the same thing though. 100%. You got to work at it, and you can see, you can see it translate to our followers and our 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 involvement online too. We don't work hard at it. We don't try, and our. Our social media sucks. The thing about and it that's is, literally is, translation. Is most people will work hard at it. They don't have the talent, and they will not get a big following because they're not interesting. That's that's the boat where I see a lot of musicians moving. Is they are interesting. All they gotta do is turn the dang camera on. Yeah, and have someone that edits edit it in a fun way too. Or, or they just could be willing yeah. to throw a little extra on the side to somebody else to do it. Yeah. So your advice made me made mine we're, feel really we're, weak. We're looking for a. Um, we're looking for a full-time paid video person. Full-time. So there you have it. If y'all know anybody, let me Ooh, know. What are y'all paying? That's pretty good. Um, <laughs> my advice was gonna be uh, be a Fruit Loop and a bowl of Cheerios, but your advice was real heavy and heartfelt, so I had to change mine. Well, I had a lot of advice though. My yeah. advice took 15 minutes. Mine, is... mine will kind of back. It's kind of in line with yours, but it's like, don't ask yourself, is this right or is this wrong? Ask yourself, is this wise? And I feel like with all three of the professions that we've talked about, music, rodeo, and social media, there's a lot of things in day-to-day that, like, it's not wrong to drink some beer tonight. It's not wrong to not post a video today. It's not wrong to skip the spur board or the, but is it wise? Right. And when you make those wise decisions daily, that's when all of a sudden it all comes together and you can go big. What's your life advice? Uh, let's go with the the norm. Wash your hands and say your prayers. Germs and Jesus are everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's just good advice, especially in these days, this day and age. Danya, what you got? Take a chance, Columbus did. <laughs> Both you guys, just solid advice all the and, way around. And short. Yes. Short. I like that in the table. Way shorter advice than yeah. this. Thing. Well, 
Thank y'all. We're on to the next one. Um, reach out to William Clark Green via social media if you want to run his social media and need some help. Yeah, thank you guys. Thanks okay. for having me. Don't forget to check out the Netflix show. Tell a friend about it.